Welcome to the Town of Southampton's Board of Selectmen's meeting for March 28th, it's at 6 o'clock. We're going to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, we have no appointments, we have no hearings, so we're gonna go right into open time for the public. I'm going to read a statement. The select board reserves a portion of its meetings for public comment and encourages participation as follows. Open time is a time when the town residents can bring matters before the select board that requires a minimum of discussion and are not on the agenda. Please try to keep your topics short and to the point. Plan on being allowed up to five minutes per person, not per topic, to speak at any meeting upon open time only. If it appears that the topic being discussed will continue longer than five minutes allocated then, at the discretion of the chair, the matter will be placed on an upcoming Board of Selectmen's meeting agenda. If you believe your topic will require more time or desire to make more of a formal presentation that is allowed under these guidelines, please contact the town administrator to ask to be put on a future agenda so that we can properly allocate enough time. You are free to ask questions or to make your point for all to consider. However, engaging in active debate with the Board of Selectmen or audience members will not be allowed. All comments and questions must be directed to the chair of the board. All remarks must be respectful and courteous Free of name calling, personal attacks, any appropriate, any appropriate language will not be tolerated. I honestly hate reading that at every meeting, but I'm opening it up for public comments at this point. Would anyone like to address the board? Edward Gwinner, Golden Circle. Sorry. Um, I watched last week's meeting. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. Some of the board members, when it was stated that the people that came in that were on the uh, try to get elected to the committee, some of the board members looked like deer in headlights. They had no clue that you weren't going to ask them a question or even introduce it. That was dead wrong, dead wrong. Um, I've heard a lot about who, uh, who, the t who some of the people here in town want back to be the town administrator. I've heard that the whole thing is being orchestrated for her benefit. But now I'll go on to a new one. A year ago, I talked to you, Charlie, or Mr. Chair, about the mess out back. And you said, well, the frost isn't in the ground yet, so they can't get back there to clean it up. Then the subject came up. You said, well, if I could get the highway superintendent to bring in a load of stone, we could get the trucks up there, and we could clean it up because the ground never froze. Well, we didn't get any rain all summer and as dry as a bone, the, the mess is still sitting there and it's bigger than ever. And now, you make another mess over there. This, there's, something, there's something wrong here, something really wrong. I don't know if the board made a decision on that. Um, how do you come to a conclusion who's gonna do the work? You're not answering. No, I'm not answering. I, list, I allow you to have public comment and you can make your comment. Okay. Did, <clears throat> after a guy makes one mess, you allow the same guy to make another mess. We have, at the time we had three that I know of, tree men, 
three companies in town. I've used two of them. One is now left. Both highly respected, do a good job. They weren't asked. That's wrong. If you're going to do something like that, you get, you get uh, a price. And these, these guys are taxpayers in Southampton. The gentleman you had is not a taxpayer in Southampton. We should be taking care of our own. <clears throat> I checked with the town treasurer collector yesterday and asked if we received any funds from this gentleman. And she said, not to her knowledge. Now, why did the guy take something, which I viewed, I come through here almost every day, take the best and leave the rest? Leave the mess for us to clean up. Um, isn't this the same gentleman you have logging over at your place? No. I beg to differ, and I'm done. Thank you. I don't like the rest of my minutes to Mr. Pellegrini. Thank you, but they're only going to give me five. Dan Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. Um, this follow-up to an email that I had sent requesting a list of roads that were approved for Chapter 90. Um, in multiple discussions we've had in the past, you've indicated, the board has indicated the process for selecting the roads on Chapter 90 was basically Randall driving around in the February, March time frame looking for roads that are bad and earmarking them. So since we're in that time frame, I'd like to understand what roads are earmarked this year for Chapter 90 funds. And then also uh, indicated through emails was that we didn't use all our funds last year because we ran out of time to get the projects done. So my next follow-on question is what projects need to be done from last year and, and what is our plan to make sure we spend all the money? Because if you guys drive around town, our roads aren't in the best of shape, especially the ones I live on or the one I live on. And every year we roll over half a million to three quarters of a million dollars in the Chapter 90 funds. And uh, right now there's also, I understand, close to a million dollars in that fund. And right now the board has no oversight of it. The finance committee has no oversight of it. It's basically given to the highway superintendent for him to pick and choose how he wants to spend it. And, um, you know, I've been in front of you guys for a year asking for Crooked Ledge Road to be repaired and brought up to snuff and at least paved to a decent manner. And uh, I'm looking to understand if that's made the cut this year or not. I can answer your question that there is a list because I remember last year signing the paperwork to get it moving. I don't have the list obviously with me. That's something that the highway superintendent keeps. And I also remember you asking and I apologize for it not getting to you. That's fine. So really more importantly, I'm, I'm looking for out for Crooked Ledge Road and what we're going to do around that. I know we're getting to a point where we can start paving because as I'm putting in a road, we're starting to get ready to repave that road again. So my understanding or what I'd like to really understand is do we have a plan to hit this as soon as that paving starts dumping, which is pretty much well right now, and plow through the million dollars we have in there and, and get our roads taken care of because this is state money that's given to us for the roads and it does us no, mo no good sitting in the bank account. It does us much better as pavement and repaired roads. So that, that's really my focus as we slip too far past the Chapter 90 funding, put in our request. I'd really like to understand what we're going to do with those roads. And then the last request I have is still uh, waiting on those meeting minutes from that executive session. I believe the town administrator advised you that those minutes have not been approved by the board yet. Okay. So and therefore... Yeah, no, and I uh, kind of went back and read the regulations on that. And basically, if there's no outstanding litigation or detriment to litigation, they are to be produced within 10 days, regardless if they're in the draft form or not. So if you can go back and kind of relook at that ruling around it, because I don't believe there's any litigation uh, related to that executive session. Did the highway superintendent give you a list of permits that you were required to have? Yes, and, and Mr. Dietz, who's running the project up there, will be going to get those permits. But those permits do not dictate whether a piece of property can be in a tree belt. It dictates whether you can work in a tree belt or not or in the town right away. 
And did you get a letter from the town administrator about a waiver? Or I haven't gotten it. Harmless or whatever that's called? I've gotten nothing. I've heard nothing. I've gotten nothing. I'm assuming that's I haven't sent it out. It, it, it's no. on deck to be sent out. All right. So I know uh, Dietz is getting ready to start on that. And I, I spoke with David yesterday, and he's supposed to be going down to secure those permits before he does any work in the uh, right away. Very good. Okay. Can I throw a question in relation to that? Uh, we've been talking about the Chapter 90 funds for a while and what roads and all that. Can we put on a, an agenda coming up soon where that money will go, what roads will be fixed? Uh, I know it's going to take Randall a while to put it together probably if it doesn't have it, but it would be nice to, to have it so we'll know. Well, I think the list is already together because I signed the paperwork so that they could get the state funding moving okay. last year. So I think the list actually exists. So if we could have it on the agenda in a week or two and, and find out. That way everybody will know where, where it is. That's what you're looking for. 100% uh, because, um, as you know, the road I live on is in rough shape and it needs to hit that list over the next couple of years. Your road um, needs to be surveyed. I've surveyed start it. With. I've surveyed uh, about 1,000 feet of it, so well, I can give you the plans to that. So. Uh, but maybe we can just put this question to rest and then go yeah. from there. Yeah, and then also what I would uh, like to see as a resident of this town is a more formal plan um, that is worked with the elected board opposed to an appointed superintendent having car blanc on what roads he wants to um, pave. This is, should be a decision made by the town, not an individual. Uh, and it should be made by elected board of peers, um, not a hired official. Um, that is the whole reason why we have elected boards opposed to hired boards. It's for our peers to make decisions in the town. This is a carryover from previous boards. Uh, uh, understand, but I think that's a substantial oh. chunk of money. I mean, if we look at what our, our we do, fifteen million dollars a year is what we take in as a town. Mm -hmm. There's a million dollars right there that we do not have any oversight on. That pretty much will can be spent at will. Well, he does come with a list before, and, and we look at it and approve it. So it's not he's not free by Understand. any means, but it's good to be more formalized. Yeah, no, and I just see us debate over five grand here or there, but yet we let a million bucks kind of go on. I wouldn't say unchecked, but right. yeah. So. Thank you. Okay. Can can we address going back to Mr. Gwinner? Sure. Uh, Mr. Gwinner is still here. You, you came up and you talked about rumors you heard about right. the... Mr. Gwinner, I'm just going to address something that you brought up. Uh, and I, I don't want to details, but you addressed that you heard uh, rumors about the town administrator committee, the town administrator, and all of that. I mean, that's why the committee was set up with four people from outside and three from inside. Whatever rumors you're hearing, we're not hearing them and there's nothing to them, so I don't want you to go on film saying that there's rumors and us not addressing them. There's nobody well, looking to put anybody in except the best candidate through the process. Well, one woman <clears throat> who took her name out of the hat, yeah. for somebody had to put, put her name back in. For town administrator? No, um, one of the women. Oh, for the committee, yes. Yes. Correct. She took her name out. Correct. And then she was convinced to put her name back in. Well, there was reasons behind that. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, but it has the nothing board, to do the with the board is not being above. Yeah. Um, be, you're not being upfront, and some people don't know what's going on. Well, it has I understand, yeah. and he he can say yes or no. Yeah. He's told he's been told that July 1st he's all done. Bob, were you told July 1st you're all done? I. Uh, my understanding is that there is a timetable um, that was discussed with both of the uh, search firms, and that is a target uh, that the board is looking for, but I have not been told that I'm leaving on July 1. I think they've set a, they've set a goal. If the goal is reached, then I guess I finish June 30th. If the goal is not reached, then I've said to the chair that I'm willing to continue until they're able to identify and hire a permanent uh, administrator. Yeah. And, and I, by the way, I can explain, I don't know if the board is absolutely aware of the logistics of how that happened with that appointment. That individual uh, put her name in, it was on the list, 
And usually on the day of uh, a selectman's meeting, he gets very busy in the office. And I usually stop reading email early in the afternoon. A message came in from her after I stopped reading email and started shuffling the papers for tonight's meeting. I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. The board went ahead with the appointment that they were uh, they had decided upon. Only the next day did I have to say we had a res we had a I sent them the copy of the email that uh, this person had withdrawn, and when she was contacted, she said, "Oh, I guess I, I'll do it." So. And in, in That's kind of how it played out. There wasn't any intention there. It was just a series the, of circumstances. The concern was having enough time to spend on the committee. I explained to her that we're going to have a consultant that is going to do all this work up front. So the committee isn't going to have to meet long term like they did last time. So that was her issue. It's not any, you know, political issues behind the scenes like you're you're surmising. But uh, you know, it makes for a good story, I suppose. Well. A lot of people in town think you're a really good story. Are you done with me? Uh, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I apologize. I did want to speak on that subject too, and uh, I'm pretty firm with Red that that individual left. That caused us some grief. It's caused us some money as a, from a search firm, and if we intend to bring that person back, especially at a higher salary, I don't know a business that would stand for that. And like I'm telling you, there is no preconceived okay. anything. Okay. You know, and you know, it, it's nice to get up here and throw all these stories out. You've got a professional committee and you've got three professional department heads. And what you're saying is those seven people are in collusion to bring back this no. unnamed person. That's just what you said. Well, no, well, John, it's our turn to address that. That's yeah. what you just said. No, Mr. And Martin. I agree 100% well, well, well. with you. If there is some collusion and some person's coming back, I wouldn't stand for it either. That's, I'm telling not, you. that's not what I said. What, what I said is there should be a black mark when we look at that candidate for the grief that she caused this town by leaving and the stress to go under a search and then the money we have to pay a search firm to only end up with the same candidate. But you're making a big assumption that whatever candidate you're talking about or every person is going to be a candidate. How do we know that until the search committee goes out there? Unless you call these people personally, you don't know who's going to apply. You don't know what applications the search committee is going to get. Why don't you wait until the process goes through and if you have a complaint, come back afterwards? Because the problem is a lot of times we don't know it's gone through until it's gone through. Or we make up stories and think we hear rumors. Why well, don't we wait heard, for the we've process? Heard, we've heard the, I've heard it too. Wait I mean, for the process. The, the, but that's the only Wait for the process. Understand it. I'm just making the comment that that person should be looked at negatively because of the grief they've caused and us. We don't know what expense. person you're talking about. How can we? Charlie, can I comment on this? It's ridiculous. Go ahead. I, 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 think uh, it's, I think it's a very important point. Um, I can tell you my own experience. About a year and a half ago, I was in Worcester. Uh, and the town where I was employed, Templeton, had a, an MCAD case against it, Mass Commission Against Discrimination. The cause of that case was that uh, a former town administrator was about to be rehired. Two members of the Board of Selectmen announced publicly that they would not consider that person because that person had sued the town. Now, <clears throat> we have to live within those rules. That is illegal. We lost the case, and the town paid $70,000. So clearly the selectmen and anyone who makes a decision cannot bar anyone uh, from being a candidate. And in fact, they have to be careful about what they say. Otherwise, as we know, lots of lawsuits will happen. And I'll just say this, you know, I'm here every day. I have no, I don't have any dog in this race. I have not heard any rumors, frankly, about any candidate having an inside track. So. I get it? Yeah. All right, stay. Yeah. I stay. Would anyone else like to address the board prior to me pulling up? Uh, don't have a name in front of me. Yes. Marjorie Strykars, Bloomer Road, Southampton. 
My reason for filing with the Attorney General's Office was to ensure transparency in government. Margie, can I say something mm -hmm. first? Y you put the board in a dilemma. By filing a complaint with the Attorney General's Office, it means that we have to basically hold off from discussion with you because now it's pending legal matters. I have deepest respect for you. I listen to you. But you put us in a position now where we really can't get into that discussion now until the Attorney General rules on your complaint. I didn't want it to go this far. You could have solved it by just talking to me. I appreciate that, but you're now in a position where you can't withdraw it from the AG's office, nor can we respond to you until such time as the AG's office rules on your complaint. So I can't talk anymore? If you want to talk, just don't talk about that topic, about the violation of the open meeting law. Well, I'll just get down then. Okay, back in February, I filled out an application to volunteer at the, <clears throat> for the Council on Aging. I volunteered to be on the board. I volunteered to work in the office. Did you ever see that? Or do they keep their applications to themselves? I honestly don't remember seeing any applications for volunteers. But <coughs> the whole point is they're not sharing information with you. I don't know that we need to see those. That's the COA board that that decides. We wouldn't normally see so them. So they get to decide without any oversight from you, even though you appoint them. Are they going to be able to do that with the director position as well, or will you get to see all applicants, or just the ones they choose to give you? By town bylaw, they have the authority to appoint. They have the yeah, but they you have no you have, you appoint them. The only authority right. we have is to appoint or remove them. And uh, frankly, I need a cause to remove them. Right now, we haven't seen enough to legitimize cause, and we need a place, to, a person to replace them also. Well, you have plenty of volunteers. They just don't tell you that people have volunteered. Well, and I think this? the cause is giving away grant money that was rightfully ours that they had until September of this year to spend and said they gave it back in January. Uh, are that, they on that's the agenda a major concern. Next week? Because there's two board vacancies and they were going to vote tomorrow on filling them. I know there was a couple of people who had applications. They were supposed to come back to us next Tuesday with that information. Is they do have a unexpected twist. They went to the personnel board, I believe, and the personnel board wanted him to rewrite the job description for the director, so that's going to slow down. But the appointment, if I remember right, we're scheduled for the 18th. We are. Is it the 18th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. to appoint whatever vacancies there are. Okay. We're waiting for their feedback. Right. And they were having a meeting that was already scheduled to vote on that, and, and then our next meeting right after that, they were coming to here, I believe. I think you're correct. Does that sound yeah. right to you? It sounds right. So we are looking forward to what they come up with and on the two two appointments. appointments. No, not until that is done. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just things just seem fishy here. It's like they want to get someone a job <coughs> and you're allowing them to do that. One of your own board members. I don't argue the fact that it looks fishy. That's right. And, uh, but we're limited in. You're not limited. Unappoint them and put someone honest and ethical on the board. You're not limited. Well, let's see who the two recommendations are. We have the right to say no to those. You do. Yeah. You also have the right to ask someone to leave. Correct. So let's see what they come up with. All right. Uh, Ms. Pellegrini, I think you're next. Thank you. Um, Heather Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. I just wanted to add, um, I, I think you might be mistaken on the open meeting law, and I think 
um, you know, the very theme of the law is for transparency and for residents to understand what's going on. You have 30 days when you receive the complaint from the resident before that is then filed with the Attorney General. So I think in essence of open communication and letting everyone know, I think we'd like to know what her, her complaint consists of. She filed, the AG's received it, and our legal counsel is responding. It goes to the local body first for 30 days. You have 30 days to respond to any open meeting law complaint. If at that point the person that filed the complaint is unsatisfied, they can then forward it on to the attorney general. But they're under no obligation to do so, provided they're satisfied with the public body's response to the original complaint. Yes. I actually have the paperwork on me if you'd like to see it. The, your argument's taken. I'm, I'm the more I'm thinking about, the more I'm agreeing so, with So, like I said, I, I think everyone in this room and probably everybody that's watching would be very interested to know what this latest um, complaint is all about. Does that work for you? As long as it's legal, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It, but we were un understanding it was going to the AG's office. And um, I haven't said to do that. I, I, I think it's happened. true, but I, I think it was, I know it was forwarded to the AG. Yeah. By who? Not by our office. I think the clerk forwarded to the AG. Okay. He, he's thinking. Okay. So. Do you have the the law there? Because we can put it into the record, or if you can just do the statute. I was very. The twix. It's the first page. Occurred. Okay. I was confused when this all occurred. It was like, wait a minute. I have the complaint if mm -hmm. so with that in mind I have no you want to come back up and everyone's comfortable no. come on back up what, what's the other people go first because that's how we cover okay uh, Heather thank you Tammy Walunas 298 College Highway um, in regards to a comment you made about the application for the director, I attended director. for director of the COA position. Okay. All right. I attended one of the meetings that they were talking about this, and they were going back and forth on this, and they had two really good applicants. App, no, at the the. Yeah. Thank you. Job descriptions. Okay. <laughs> and now, that, that was back in late January, early, early February, that I attended. So you're and saying now, they should have. They that should was your already comment about have the job. that. That was your comment. They presented those to the personnel board, and my impression at the meeting was the personnel board needed them redrafted. Uh, Art's sitting here, he's on the personnel board. I can ask him directly and see if he recalls where that went. I just, it just seems very strange that they were ready back then. They had a really good job description okay. and were ready to go forward. They knew they were, they were trying to get this done, to get a new director in there. Yeah. And to hear now that we're at the end of March and they still don't have a job description that they approved? One or two meetings ago, they, they promised us that they would have a meeting, do the job description, and submit it to the PQB, which sounds like they did, but there seems to be another link. I don't know if Art wants to talk about it. Update us? Thank you. After, I guess, a four or five month hiatus, uh, yes, we did receive a, uh, a job description Actually, I've received three job descriptions, and uh, at the at the meeting when when the, the latest one was presented to the board, the board members thought it wasn't adequate enough, and it didn't cover, you know, things like we were very sensitive about supervisory and those type of words really just bounce right out because there's you know fair labor standard acts and so on and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> we thought, you know, in this particular case, that uh, at least from a supervisory point of view, this is not a supervisor, and stuff like that. And, and people just throw that out. Oh yeah, well, they, they supervise us. No, they direct. They don't really supervise. And, and there's a very, you know, there, there's there's a, uh, a logical way you go to decide whether whether a supervisor is or not. That's one example. 
Um, one of our members, Jim Palermo, volunteered to work over the weekend with uh, one of the members from the, the board and uh, to help re rewrite this. And again, he's from the, formerly from the neighbor, uh, National Labor Relations uh, Board in, in, in New York, so he knows how to do this stuff. And uh, the next day I received a, a uh, sort of a snarky email in which I had forwarded on to Jim saying that, do we really want to do this? And uh, <clears throat> he got in contact with the particular individual and said basically, um, you know, uh, I, I volunteered my own time, not as a board member, to do this, but after that type of email, I don't think I should. So um, I haven't talked to Jim since, but that is the status of it. And like I say, it's, we're talking four or five months that they had to put this in, and now all of a sudden it's go, 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 go. <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out where it is. So it sounds like you sent it back for some changes and they haven't resubmitted it to you yet. We haven't tried yet. So we, and we need a week from the... We just got it Thursday, right? It was just last Thursday that we right. received it. Okay. Joanne Alderman, 48 High Street. Um, I'm on the Personnel Policies and Procedures Board. <clears throat> and you're right, there were two other job descriptions, one which had been apparently the original one, one that had been the um, job description that was essentially developed by um, is it Don Jacobs. Um, <clears throat> and we had been asked that with all job descriptions, they follow a certain format. And this is a format which is, um, it's really nationally recognized, but it also allows um, people like us to score positions appropriately. The uh, COA rewrote the um, job description again, and it did not follow any of the um, required uh, elements that should have been in there that we have tried to have for all other uh, employee positions. Did you explain that to the folks from the COA when they were there? Or did they actually um, come, or did they submit it? Okay. And I believe we did talk about that, yes. Yeah, along with the okay. other things that uh, Art was mentioning. Did they say they'd get it back to you by the next meeting? They intend, that's what they said, and that's when Jim offered to help. Right. Um, just to make sure that things got put in the proper format. Um, it's apparently not instinctual, so uh, yeah. at least that's my recollection. Okay. Janet Kane, uh, 83 Glendale Road, also the liaison from finance to personnel. Um, the other issue was there was, we require a personnel request form, a PRF, to be submitted with a um, posting in order to get it approved. The PRF did not have an hourly rate on it, and then the hours were 19.5 hours with six hours of outreach time. So it was kind of a, we needed to kind of I asked them to fine to that, but we need an hourly rate. We need a job posting, which wasn't included in the submission last Thursday. So there were a lot of things that still weren't completed as much as I think being a senior in town, I would also like to get this moving forward. And it just unfortunately wasn't properly presented. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Open time for the public? Better catch it now. I, <laughs> um, I have a question about the Corey or the new interim director. It's supposed to be done by someone in that office. <clears throat> it used to be Jen and Nancy. The COA, the COA board has now told Nancy she is no longer able to do them. And they are appointing their own chair, who's been chair for two weeks, to do the Corey check on the new interim. They are not supposed to have any direct supervisory experience in that office. 
that it, it specifically says in the Elder Affairs that that query has to be done by someone in their office. Obviously, it can't be Shannon because she was the one who do it. Would, she can't do a query on herself. And, and you took the power away from Nancy, who's leaving this week. So who is going to do the query check, and when is it going to be done? And it had to be, by law, it had to be done before she even went in there and touched anything. And you all know it. I've told you that. And, and you just, because she works on the board, it's not necessary? Well, first, no one here is gainfully employed on this board. I know that. I'm not saying, I'm just saying but, there are, you take, don't point, follow the rules. Would it be acceptable for the board to ask the town administrator to find out who's doing the Cory check on their or give employees? the Or give the right back to Nancy before she leaves in two days and we it can be done. We don't have the power to hand it back to her. The board well, of, on the Council on Aging has that authority. But they have no one now. The board doesn't get to do the Cory checks. That's who they have doing them now, if they even do them. And that's can, can a board actually do a Cory check? I mean, an individual, it doesn't have to go through like the police department. They have to be certified to do it. Right. So they just can't do a quarry check because they want to. It has to go through a certified person or a police department. And, and, and the only certified people for the Council on Aging were Nancy and Jen. Okay. Jen is no longer there. So Nancy was certified to do that. And they went in there one day and told her she couldn't do it anymore, that Patrice was going to take that over. Well, the question can be asked, and then we'll find out. Because I know I know I had to have one. They told that was the first thing they told me when I volunteered for, to work there, mm -hmm. that I needed to get a quarry check. It was done by the next day. This woman has been in there since February. By the next day. By yeah. the next day, it takes. It's not a big deal to do it if you know what you're doing. It was done the next day. I guess I don't have enough experience in those, but uh, well, used to do them for recreation camps and oh, camp right. instructors and all the rest. They usually of that. took a couple weeks. Yeah, and then if you had to do foreign, it goes checks. it goes through a database and it's done. It's it's updated now, where it's all done okay. by computer and they can they can find everything. Are you telling me I'm old? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, mine mine was done in a day. Okay. So She's been in there since record. February, and now there's nobody even qualified to do it. So we've got to find out who's qualified to do it and yeah. find out. Well, it would, it, I'm telling you, it would be Nancy up until she leaves in two days. But obviously that probably won't happen unless we can get Nancy to do it within the next day or two. Bob, is that We can get it done. Okay. I can get it done. Okay, so well, we'll get it. Outside the department. Okay. Well, no, it's got to be with inside the department. It's got, it has to be done by the senior center. That's the law. They, can, they have to do it well, they have from to their answer office. Us how they're doing it. Yeah. That's the question. So well, the, there won't the first be anybody question that... should be, has it been done? Well, yeah. well, That's number one. And if it hasn't been done, why hasn't it been done? Oh, and if not, let's, let's do it. Do it. Get I, it done. I think uh, perhaps Flo, Flo, our volunteer coordinator, could do it as well. Again, if it, the person has to be certified, we've got to find that out who's certified to do it. Did I'm you? telling you. Well, I know. I, I appreciate that, but we just want to verify it for the record. It just seems like I'm not saying that there's anything on that, Corey, that's even going to be re relevant. Well, you're, well, it's you're, the idea that you're making it look like there is. The question is going to be asked. Okay. When, we'll look when, when Bob finds out, he'll respond to me okay. and he'll copy you. Bob? I will. Okay. 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 Florence Collins E Street, and I'm the volunteer coordinator. I am authorized to do the car checks, but at this point, I usually just do the people who are on my service list. Okay. You know, our volunteer and service right. people. Okay. Okay. Just want to set that. So, is the process there. just a quick one-day process? Yes, it most so you, most often is. Most go into a database. Five minutes. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's been updated since we had ours done, Charlie. Yeah. Okay. Either that or ours is just too long. <laughs> Don't say that into the microphone. <laughs> that we're all old. We're all old. <laughs> No, we can't be old because the seniors are here to talk to us. <laughs> so can we have Florence do it tomorrow? I'm sorry? Can we have her do it tomorrow before? If, if she has the capacity to do it and she's willing to. Are you? And do we? She'll be there Thursday. So she will do this Corey check on Thursday. You will ask the, the board on Council on Aging who they're authorizing to do this. And we'll go from there. And my question to you is, you do a Cory check and you come back with records, yeah. what are you going to do with that information? 
sell it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think she's going to do with it? And, and I'm assuming if it comes back <laughs> negative, you react to that rule. Oh, it's supposed to be the board on uh, council. COA me. board, yeah. Not I'm, me. I'm just saying that in general, yes. Uh, uh, God. Uh, I never thought we'd be doing this. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone else for open time for the public? Uh, is Lori here? Of course Lori. <laughs> oh, why, there she is. <laughs> she is. You didn't see her? Uh, I, I have know to I'm be little. impartial, remember? <laughs> um, I just want to make, before I get into this, one comment. I am one of the applicants to be on the Council on Aging Board. Mm -hmm. And on March 7th, I commented that I had submitted my request. And, of course, it's been shuffled to the bottom of the pack. So I spoke with the program manager at um, the Office of Elder Affairs, and that is why Mr. Kanicki received a, my application the other day, which I delivered to the town administrator, because that was the advice I was given. Okay. Go over their head, the select board is in charge, and um, they go directly to the selectmen. Now, so. who's, who's the second application through? Much. Did you give a copy of the application to the town administrator like like that? Well, I told you it's the council on aging office. Okay. Do you do you have to have a copy? And then make a copy. They have, they should have it in their office. But make a copy and deliver it to the town administrator yeah. to go directly to the selectmen. If, and if you can't get a copy, can you just do a second one? Yes. The information won't change, right? No. <laughs> well, it depends. That's the, the quarry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that way, for the meeting coming up on the 18th, we'll have both applications in front of us, yes. depending on the action. So, yeah. Well, if you give them both to the town administrator, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And, and right now, they're, they're operating on a minimal um, of five members bylaws for Southampton. And for the state, say they should have a minimum of seven. Okay. So they're making decisions without a full board. So there's two seats open now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought there was one. No, two. two. No, we, we talked about that last week. Right. The person resigned October 27th. That's right. But the board didn't think they resigned. No. Well, that's another story. I'm not going there. Anyhow, so, um, thank you for listening to us. Thanks. And this is us. So we should have a resolution on this by the 18th at our meeting here. Oh, good. We're not going to have a resolution. Well, I, I think the board's <laughs> going to come to us and let us know <coughs> what they're doing with the two vacant seats, and the, we oh, can I react can... from there. Yep. Oh, I will be here. I can hardly wait. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. I will, too. Um, and I, I just want to say, I want the board to be aware that we're not here to malign or to spot anyone. Our only purpose as seniors is to have our opinions and voices heard. And my first, everyone has handouts. Yep. And the, thir the first thing was the position of director. I think we've beaten that horse into the ground tonight. Um, but again, we're still waiting. You know, our former director offered to train. That was ignored. So when a new director comes in, it would be nice if we can approach her and she would be willing to come in and train a new director. Okay. And hopefully it's ASAP. Our assistant director is resigning as of March 30th, which is this week. After six years in that position, she's now been subjected to reporting her every work move. She was also stripped of important work assignments like the quarry. It would benefit the select board not only to read her letter of resignation, but to conduct an exit interview with her. Stop. Okay. Have you scheduled that exit interview? I sent an email message uh, to the individual today, okay. uh, offering tomorrow or Monday okay. for the exit interview. Yeah. Again, I didn't, I have, I'm not up to date on email after like two o'clock, but I expect a, re a response, and we'll either do it this week or next. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the second van driver, I understand 
that posting has been approved, so that's a mute point if that's the case. I don't know how they advertise, but I've been told that. I don't know. Okay, that's two of us then <laughs> that no. don't know. Um, Corey, you know, I worked 20 years with classified material. Corey is not something to take lightly. This is a very serious matter. You know, there was concern. The board brought up the concern about volunteers being in the office where personal information is stored. Our volunteers are in the main community room. When they do anything, that's where they are. They're not in the office to begin with. The Corey checks are a legal matter. I mean, we don't, the last thing Southampton needs is another legal problem, believe me. The select board should be more concerned with the board members who have been in the office for months. Jen left October 1st, or October 4th, maybe. They've been in there moving and deleting files. We have no idea if they've been quarried. We have no idea when they were quarried. This is a very serious legal problem with a lot of ramifications. And I speak, like I said, 20 years work experience working with classified. Our volunteers, they're an integral part of the senior center. We are blessed to have a wealth of knowledge and experience use, utilizing our center. We have managers, we have teachers, we have craftspeople, we have veterans. They volunteer for various activities. Some of them lead the osteo group. Some of them come in to help with various games that the seniors play. Uh, they help decorate, they take care with the luncheons. And now, all these changes are being made. We're not utilizing them. We're closing the doors to these seniors. Lack of communication is the biggest problem. We spoke about this on March 7th when the council was here. There is no communication. They go to their meeting, they meet for about 10 minutes, and then they say to anyone who's there, we're going into executive session. And it was really interesting when I spoke to the man at Elder Affairs, the program manager, he said to me, Council on Aging very rarely go into executive sessions. And I said, I always do it on a regular basis. So what is going on in their executive sessions? I have no idea, because of course, can't be there, because I'm not on the council. Right. So anyhow, to get back to this. Now, can I, let me ask a question. Sure, uh, go ahead. Uh, not so much for you, but for Bob or anybody else here. When do they release their executive session minutes? Have we seen any being released? I don't have any. Okay. Can, can we follow up on that? Because like uh, Dan was saying, there, there's a certain point. Yeah. You have to go on, you got to get on a microphone. I'm yeah. sorry. They criticize me constantly for not speaking. That's okay. Uh, to answer your question, if you go on their website, they are months behind on submitting minutes. Months, okay. Can months. you identify yourself just? Susan Canning, Hillside Meadows. Okay. So we can check into that. Thanks. Yeah, it's right on your website. Excuse Thank me, you. Mrs. Loizo, excuse me. Um, I have a public records request in for the minutes for the uh, COA board. Okay. Uh, they have not been published. I, they're not in the, uh, the the town clerks or online since May of last year. Okay, good. Thank you. Ryan. Thank you. And one other, what's one other question for you? Sure. Uh, since I interrupted, Corey checks. Does anybody know how long those are good for once one is done? One year. One year. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. Thank you. Annual. That was something I didn't know. I just found that out when I went to have mine redone. That's a short period. I yeah, think it, it was is. One year as long as, but if they continued employing it, went up to three. No, I'm just, I've, I've been having it on a system for years. I'm just My secret clearance is still good, 50 years later. Your what is? <laughs> My secret uh, clearance. <laughs> she belongs to the Secret Squirrel Society. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyhow, so lack of communication. Um, I just, you know, these board members, not all, there are a couple of board members that I want to exclude. We have three board members that are really our problem children. They have never participated in anything that goes on at the senior center. They come to no functions, they don't come to luncheons, 
How do they know what the seniors want if you don't talk to them? You know, what is this? Some kind of a, I'll pick it out of the hat and decide what I'm doing. So um, anyhow, let me continue on. Um, listening to the opinions of our seniors and showing them respect and dignity is very, very important. The COA board and the friends of the COA. The friends are the only fundraiser for the senior center. And when you look at your paperwork and you look at attachment A, or you look at these chairs, thank you friends of the senior center because that's where these chairs came from. You know, they are the ones that supply the center with everything. We never know. There's a computer program that the Friends is willing to purchase and to pay the maintenance charge, which would give them an idea of who utilizes the center, what benefits they're using in the center. The board has decided they don't want it. The changes that have been made. Changes were made to the newsletter. Again, nobody knew. Newsletter appeared with all these changes. Wouldn't it have been nice if we had had a contest? You know, let's get some input here. Say, we're going to have a contest to rename the newsletter. Ask them how they like the new format. I can tell you because I've heard from the seniors. The board has no idea. People are thoroughly confused. They don't know where to find things anymore. In the 17-year tenure of our former director, many classes, events, and trips were provided and welcomed by our seniors. There's another attachment that shows what took place. The board made the decision they are no longer of any value. They can do better. Again, no input from the senior community. So these are the changes they're making. Greeting cards. We have maybe three boxes of greeting cards. People come in, we all donate to charities, we get these cards, we have no use for them. We bring them in, we say to the seniors, take as many as you want, that's what they're there for. Flo sends out greeting cards to our residents who are 80 or older. I happen to be the bingo caller. We have a family that come to bingo. If somebody is out sick, we grab one of those cards, everybody signs it, we send it out, the person comes back and says, wow, that was the greatest thing I got. We're going to eliminate that because obviously this must be a big savings of what, I'm not quite sure. It costs zero. Yeah. The books, no longer accepting books. The only way we heard about this a man came in with books, and we heard them say, we're not taking them anymore. The people love coming in. I, I understand we're a little cramped for space, but as, you, as I wrote in the presentation, we have people with library experience, get rid of the old editions, put the new ones in. People come in, they like the books, because unlike the library, they don't have a time period. They can keep it six months, we don't care. It comes back whenever. The medical equipment. That was really interesting. We no longer accept medical equipment because of sanitary reasons. I would like the board to go visit our restroom. You want to see sanitation problems? That's where it exists. I'm not worried about the medical equipment. I'm such a hard time keeping a straight face with this. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It's a fact. It is a fact. You know, I will buy them for the Lysol. You know, Lysol somebody. Lysol is not a sanitizer. Well, we'll buy a bottle of bleach. Whatever you want, Charlie, I will buy. <laughs> right? I'm not going to leave. I can see. You know, and, and, you know, like I wrote in the presentation, I'm not unique. If I buy something new, I take it home, I wash it, or I clean it before I use it. We have never received anything. What an insult to the residents of Southampton that they give us their medical equipment and it's dirty. Come on, people. Anyhow, so now we don't take 
medical equipment. Can I ask you a question on all this, the greeting cards, the books, medical equipment? Right. Did the board take any input from the? Oh, God, no. The seniors? So they no, did we, this we, in just a vacuum, never discussed it? No. Nope. We find out about it when we hear someone say, oh, I called to get a piece of medical equipment. And I was told we don't do that anymore. When did that happen? You know, and one of my suggestions would be, if you're going to eliminate these services, could you let this community know? You've got a newsletter. <coughs> could you put in the newsletter? <coughs> By the way, we were no longer allowing these things to be done. No, you wait until a person needs it. We have someone, I, I, I'm not gonna say how I know her because I'm gonna keep her privacy, but obviously money is an issue. And she had a very rickety walker. She came to the center and got a beautiful walker, one of them with the seats. Mm -hmm. You know, <coughs> we're here to service these seniors, not to take away from them. Yeah. Maintenance person for the center. And this comes back to the restroom, Mr. Kanicki. <laughs> I said bathrooms and meat. And <laughs> you know, the town needs to supply someone you know, to clean the senior center. No argument from me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we because. We are trying to establish somebody for this building that's janitorially trained. Oh, good. To focus on this. Yeah. We have obviously a lot of other issues we're dealing with, but we have been for the last two months, you'd say, pushing forward on that. Mm -hmm. I'll be on that screening committee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll need one for that. <laughs> no. The difficulty is not so much finding a qualified person, it's finding uh, the monies to do it this year. Uh, we're struggling also to come up with some funding starting July 1. But there's a commitment by the selectmen to get it done, so it's, yeah. it's not being neglected. Okay. We're going to have it. It'll, it'll get there. We'll get there. I yeah. cannot tell you how many times I've been here to bail out the bathroom. I, I know. I never realized it was the board chair's responsibility. <laughs> but I learned fast here. See? Where's that job description? I'm telling you. You know. And so that's my main concern. And the other concern we have, um, Richard, who is our van driver, during the luncheons would take out the heavy tables and open them for the luncheons. Yeah. And I understand that Franklin Regional Transit has a problem with that. I have no problem with that. But we need somebody to come in when we have a luncheon. You can't expect a senior to do that because if they get hurt, is the town responsible then? I mean, you know, we're we looking at a medical issue here. So, I mean, get someone from the highway department. I don't care where they come from. The problem is, is the highway department's committed to do highway work and to pull somebody off in the middle of the day from a project doesn't work well. Okay, well, let me It's let a me dilemma. Say, I don't have a solution. I do, under Mr. Kinnicky's job description. <laughs> move the table. You had me move, put the drop box on the wall. Pretty soon I'll be. I'll, I'll second that motion. There you go. <laughs> It's only a couple of tables. It's not a really a big deal. You can do it, Charlie. Chairs. Could you please put that in the minutes, the Mr. Kinnicky's job the description? I can help out with that, and I'm disabled. That's how bad it is over there. So you're saying he could do it, right? That's right. He could, he could do it. All in favor of Mr. Kinnicky doing it. <laughs> I thank you for the gameful employment you've given me. <laughs> we're, here, we're here to help. I can see. Um, the grant money. That, that's really, <coughs> I'm, not, I don't, I'm not a financial person, but um, it was returned for the dementia programs. Mm. But when I went up and got the information from the accountant, it was two separate grants. They not only sent back dementia, they sent back van money. And that's something that needs to be looked at. And like I say, I'm not financial, so. Mm -hmm. But um, it's in the attachments. What time of day do you move those tables? What, what time of day for the tables? Mm -hmm. Carolyn, when's the luncheon? Um, the 7th. 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 7th.
What time would you like them there for the tables? Uh, any time in the morning, early afternoon. Any time we, that day. Uh, we start setting up at 11. Sure. Some kids in high school, huh? And all we need usually is two tables. tables. No, Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, we can handle the chairs. Okay. Put that on the microphone so people can hear you. Uh, Lori. Lori. Oh, Lori. We, Lori. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I was just talking about, you know, maybe we can get some kids from the high school to volunteer to come in. To, in order to graduate, They're they at need school. to. After, after, after school. Yeah. You know, they need to have a certain amount of hours volunteering in the community. Do it the day before. Right. And we could talk to, you know, the high school up there to see uh -huh. if we can't get somebody to come. Yeah. I mean, if you can do it at night, there's probably a lot more people that can help out yeah. the night before. Yeah. Just during the day, everybody's working. But at we night. Could, we could probably arrange yeah. that. Do it the night before. Yeah. Yeah. If you can do that, put a schedule out and let us know. Sure. Bounce it on the web page. Yeah. Need volunteers to move tables on yeah. April 6th. And if you can break be it. There, be there at 7. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Are you volunteering? No. Careful, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I got four children that I may volunteer. There you go. Uh, <laughs> don't forget the floor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is going well. Actually, oh, yeah, friends, friends pays once a year fast. to have the floor cleaned and stripped okay. and everything. Yeah, really? so that, that is done. And who do you use for the floor? I'm sorry, what? Who do you use for the floor? Do you know who we use for the floor? The yearly thing that you have done. No, the floor. The oh, waiting, so. Nancy always got it for me. It's an elderly couple. Skip that. They come in and they charge, I think it was three or four hundred dollars to uh, strip the wax off the floor, put wax on, and then dry it, and then forget a coating on top of that to stabilize it. And you do it all in one day, just two people. Wow, they do a good, good job. Yeah, the floors look great. Do. And it lasts a good six, seven months. Yeah. You've been there for at least 20 minutes now at that podium. Okay, I'm done, anyhow. And I'm, I'm, we have other people here from yep. other business too, and Art Lawrence wants some time at I know the podium he does. also. And I'm just gonna end by saying, what a difference when there's communication. Mm -hmm. And I think this meeting proves that. Yeah. And Thank I, you. I hope you. everybody comes back for the 18th meeting, too. Oh, I will be here. <laughs> Art? No, that's fine. You're all set? No, I want to go, but after. No, you go before, Art, because once he gets going, <laughs> ain't no stopping Art. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Art told me he wanted to be last. Thank you. Can you get it? Yeah. How you doing, folks? Good. Uh, my name's Dennis LeClerc. I'm from 36 Strong Road, Southampton. Yeah, I'm from the sen Senior Center, too, and I've got concerns. I want to back up Lori. Uh, I see what's going on. Uh, I'm not happy with uh, the... I'm a veteran, too, and I'm kind of low income. <clears throat> I shouldn't bring that up to announce to the world, but I'm kind of hurting. And I use the van a lot. I mentioned that uh, one of our sessions. And uh, I don't like how the front office took control over the books and uh, the, the cards, the Christmas cards especially, and birthday cards. And we do use them, like Lori said, to send them out to people that were sickly or hospitalized and stuff like that. That means a lot to our people. It really does. Luckily, I haven't been in a hospital, but, you know, we look forward to these things. And uh, get back to, uh, to try to get to the toilet stuff and stuff Lori mentioned. East Hampton, I lived in East Hampton all my life up to almost three years ago. I moved here with my son. They do this stuff, they take the stuff, they clean it up somewhat, and they give it to the seniors. I don't know what's a big deal in Southampton. What's going on with East Hampton? Are we fuddy-duddies or what? Let's help the elderly 
and the needy people. We're not asking for a lot, but if we can help the elderly, like, where do you think I got this? You think I bought it? This, uh, this, uh, the VA helped me. I didn't get it out of my pocket. So we need help from uh, you people and, you know, the, the office people and that, uh, the board. I don't know who I'm talking to, but no, we need help. We need help. And uh, I do back her up. The senior center is not happy. We're not happy with the office, I'll tell you. And it's a shame. We used to be happy when uh, Cindy, was it? Jen. Jen, when Jen was there, she was such a pleasant woman. And now we're not happy. Uh, everything's, we're not advised as seniors. It's just taken, maybe that's how it is done with management, I don't know. But you would think you'd come to us about cards, which is little to maybe Nothing. management, but to us people, you should see how many people use <laughs> these cards, Christmas cards and birthday cards and books I hear, I see. I mean, and, and really, uh, if there is a chance, try to get back to uh, possibly those, I don't know if this is the right word, utensils. I know utensils is nice forks and stuff like that, but like walkers and stuff like that, because East Hampton does it. East Hampton takes them in, cleans them, and sends them out. What they need to do is establish a policy on how they're going to do this. Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. But I think what you're doing is what you want to accomplish. You're letting your voice be heard throughout the town by standing at that podium and expressing to the board members of the Council on Aging that there's a problem. Yeah. And that they have to listen. Well, I'm backing up, Lori. I wouldn't do that, but... <laughs> <laughs> she speaks very well for us. Lori and I have had fun for years. I know you do. Her. I saw it. Yeah. But I thank you for your uh, my I thank, time. I thank you. I, I, excuse me, I have one question. Dennis, was that you? Yes. Dennis, well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for your service to the country. Thank you. Um, my question is, are, are you having any difficulty getting the van? Has the van been readily available uh, for the you? Policy, the <laughs> policy, the, I hate it with one van. East Hampton's got three vans. I know they're a bigger town. That's what they say. They get more money coming in. By, I don't know how they get it, but you they're know three probably. three times the size of us. Right, that's, they're that's bigger. That's the reason why. But we have, we got to have it this way, and they explained it to me. Doctors come first, and hospitalizations come first, and then everything else comes secondary, you know, going to shopping or whatever. But doctors come first, and I understand that. So sometimes I make my appointments, sometimes I don't. I got to shift my doctor's appointments around. And you know, doctors aren't too happy about that. They, you got to try to make what they make, you know, tell you what their appointments are. But for the most, I, I, I'm happy. I'm, I'm thankful to you guys for, and ladies, for, for the, the van. I'd be lost because I'm disabled. I don't have a car. I'd be really lost. I really mean that. And I hope that never gets taken away. I really mean that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank sir. You. I mean, if I can say something. It seems like from our point of view, after listening to all you folks the last couple of meetings, we need, as a board, to follow up and make sure the job description gets to the PQB, gets posted quickly, hiring process is done for a permanent uh, director, and the two board positions are filled. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm seeing as our job to work on with the COA board. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Francine Tishman, 83 Glendale Road. I just want to say that we volunteered more than a year ago to drive people from the senior center to doctor's <clears throat> appointments, and we were quarry checked 
and we've never been contacted. So it hurts me to hear that people need rides. We're available to give people rides, and yet there's no connection between us and the people who need it. Has it ever been so I hope that maybe with this we'll, we'll get it going. And can that be put in the newsletter? Pardon? That, can that be put in their newsletter so people see it? Well, would they you? have a, a list that comes out and asks people what things would yeah, you like to always, volunteer for, and we've we signed up and, and we're never called. So. I don't know. They, I'm sure my driving record was <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but I just want to say that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Want to introduce Art Lawrence? Uh, last week, uh, you folks listened to the school pitch. This week, you're going to listen to the seniors' pitch. And I'm going to be a heck of a lot more serious than what you've heard so far. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Art Lawrence. I live at 113 Cricket Ledge Road. I am here tonight not as an elected official, but simply a citizen of Southampton and look at the hair in the face, a senior. Uh, many thanks to Mrs. Strykars and Mrs. Loisel for their persistence and for raising uh, all these senior concerns. It certainly got me thinking, and hence this presentation tonight. Uh, let me first apologize if I offend anyone. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm pretty blunt and pretty outspoken. So. Please accept my apologies now. A couple weeks ago, I was reading in the Wall Street Journal, I read an article that stated that on January 1st, 2017, the first of the baby boomers have started to retire. I thought that was a kind of an interesting uh, uh, article, seeing that the baby boomer population is the largest population ever in this country and probably will be the largest forever. Um, <clears throat> there are going to be a lot more folks like me walking around town, I can, I can assure you of that. And we also, of course, we know Southampton, Southampton is an aging, um, uh, has a, an aging population. I did some uh, research online uh, at the Elder website and uh, got some statistics for Southampton, calculated them out, and roughly about 20% of our population is considered a senior. And that's going to absolutely grow as, as we get more and more people, these baby boomers, retiring. And to put it bluntly, the Southampton seniors, I feel, are getting the short end of the stick. Absolutely no question about that. Um, I've got a bunch of senior issues, but let me, uh, let me state these are my issues. These are the ones I think are important, uh, and, and obviously there are probably many others. And let me start with something good, um, a shout out and a big thank you to Nancy, Flo, and Richard uh, for all they do with such little support and so little to work with. And again, as been mentioned by my uh, two, of the three, uh, uh, two of the three amigos, uh, that Nancy, unfortunately, is leaving us the, uh, at the end of the week. Um, let me start with the first one, the big one for me, is ambulance service. And I don't know how long we've been screwing around with this stuff, uh, two, three, four, five years, I don't know. It seems like every time I look, and, and I know it's currently going on, some mumbo jumbo patchwork of, uh, of uh, uh, paramedics and EMTs. And even if everything works out perfectly, even if we get all the money, even if we magically can align the stars and get all these uh, paramedics and EMTs uh, attending at the, at the right time, we still are going to only have two shifts. Two shifts. Now, I'm not asking, I'm not requesting, I'm not begging. I'm demanding 24 hours, seven, uh, 24 uh, seven coverage for the ambulance service. And this is not just for seniors, this is for all, the whole, the whole town. There's got to be a way. I mean, you, you guys are creative people. There's got to be a way. Do we have to outsource it? Do we have to talk to Holyoke? Do we have to talk to Westfield, uh, East Hampton? Do we have to go to, a, to an outside uh, firm, a professional ambulance uh, service? But we've got to do something. And believe me, I can assure you, because I used to be in the, in the medical field many, many years ago, um, most heart attacks happen in the morning. 
early in the morning when you first wake up. And I'm lucky because I'm an old guy. I have all this great collateral cir circulation around my heart. I've got all these vessels. And so if one occludes, hey, eh, I've got some others. So my heart, heart attack's gonna be a lot less than you three up here. Because when you, when you three have it, you, it's gonna be really dangerous and you'll, you'll want that damn ambulance there in just a few minutes. Next, my next issue, okay. my next issue is now, I, 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 you know, we all know the males have higher incidence than the females. Well, thanks for explaining that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my next issue is, is right behind you in this monstrosity called the senior center. It's an absolute disgrace. And some people have talked about the, the cunulus. I'm just going to talk about simple things like, do you see one, one easy chair in that place? You see anywhere where somebody can sit down, a senior can sit down and read the paper and drink a cup of coffee and converse with other seniors? No reading rooms, no music rooms, no exercise rooms, no card rooms, oh, no slow nothing. Down, slow down. Do you have that list printed? Yes. Because I can't, I can't write it down that fast, Art. And the other thing is lunches. You know, whoever the bozo that designed this place I can't believe they undersized the septic system. So we can't have a luncheon, a real luncheon in there, or we can't have lunch service because our septic system will not septic handle it. Septic system was never designed for- Well, people. fix it, fix it, simple as that. Well, I will get to that. And I asked the young people, not only the, what few are in this room and, and others that are, uh, that are uh, on, on, watching on TV, you know, take a, take a tour through there. Just remember, this is where your mother and father, grand, grandmother and grandfather are supposed to go. And compare this, Southampton Senior, go to a, that real poor, that real poor city, you know, the one we all say, oh boy, they got nothing going over there. Go to Holyoke and look at their senior center and it's like going to India and seeing the Taj Mahal before you. Or shoot up to Northampton, go up and down those hallways. Or the latest, Hadley, 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 5,100 people versus our what, 6,100, 6,200 here, have just, just approved a $5.3 million senior center. So. <clears throat> well, you can, you can address it. Can you be quiet for a minute? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> get on the agenda and you can speak your piece too. Um, the next thing is senior events. My wife and I have been here about 14, 15 years. In, the, in that time period, both of us, we've been to one event, and that was a, a, a painting class I took a number of years ago. Don't get me wrong, extremely well done. We had 25, 30 people in that class. I look around, I see some of the, some of the members uh, here that were, that were in that class, but that's about it. I haven't seen much since. Yeah, we have bingo, we have yoga, we have some foot person come in, we have a shine coordinator, whatever a shine coordinator does. And, and don't get me wrong, these are important uh, things for, for, for some of the seniors. I, I happen to like photography, you know. I like gardening. It'd be nice to have a master gardener come in and maybe give a course on, you know, getting my tomato yields up a little better. Uh, I like to watch, I, I do bird watching. Uh, I'd like somebody to come in and talk about climate change or maybe senior finances. Just think, we've got five colleges and universities right up the road. We've got community colleges around here, experts in surrounding uh, communities, experts right here in Southampton. And, you know, we should compare what we have next door to what the, what the good folks down the library, uh, Barbara Golden and uh, uh, Johanna Douglas do, they have multiple, multiple events every month and, and bring in very large crowds. Next thing, next issue I have is warming and cooling stations. We all know the weather, certainly lately, is crazy. You know, in the summer we get those weeks of uh, 90 plus uh, uh, temperatures and then in the winter we get, uh, you know, uh, wind chill factors of, you know, minus 10, minus 12. What was it, about three or four years ago, we had the October storm where this whole place was shut down for, what, five days, six days, seven days? It was a good week. That should have been a wake-up call, I think, to the, to, to, the, to the town that, you know, we, had, we were totally just shut down. 
So what do we lack? We lack a backup generator and a plan. My God. If you look at the basement uh, the, the, of Town Hall, we have a transfer switch, a Kohler transfer switch, all ready to go. All you need is to plug in a, in a, a, a backup generator. And we don't have a plan? Are you kidding me? You know, we've got the fire department personnel over there. You mean they can't come over here and, 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 and watch the seniors to make sure they don't, I don't know, shut the lights off or something? Or we have auxiliary police. We can't call up the auxiliary police. We can't form an emergency management volunteer. I mean, some of this stuff just gets, uh, gets ridiculous. And I'll tell you what will happen. All it takes is some little old person who dies of heat exhaustion or freezes to death in their, in their house, and believe me, within a millisecond, we will have a backup generator and we will have a plan. There are other issues too. Uh, medical outreach is probably one, and there's, there's probably 10 or 15 others. But those are the, high, the ones that came to the surface for me. Let me quickly change gears here and talk about the COA director, the permanent COA director. What I'd like to see is a full-time, 40-hour-a-week senior um, uh, uh, COA uh, the director. And I'd like to see the senior center open at least five days, more if we could get it. What does this director need? What type of uh, credentials should, should this director have? Well, of course, experience in dealing with elderly, huh? That, that's sort of a no-brainer. Training, education, I would say a minimum of a, ba a bachelor's degree. Most important, be able to work with and understand and sit down with seniors and understand their issues. Make the senior center vibrant, as bad as it is, but make it vibrant again. Get the talks going, get the workshops. Somebody who can write grants and get grants. And I think what's really important, to pull together the resources in, in this town to get a new senior center on the drawing board. Now, again, and I know you, well, no more nickels and dimes. I mean, we need to pay a director a good wage. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you what I see in the, the surrounding areas. Um, I, I, I see salaries up in the, in the, in the $50,000 range. It may be a little too high for us, but, you know, we need to get out of this, you know, $14 an hour or whatever we've been paying. I see the big guys. Everybody's looking at me saying up front here saying, you know, where are we going to find the money? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, we always seem to find the money, don't we? We, we have million-dollar ball fields. We uh, can spend $80,000 on, a, on a, a little league field and with dugouts. Just a couple weeks ago, we got $80,000 for laptops. And next year, there's going to be a request for another $80,000 in laptops. And, you know, I, uh, I think, you know, well, that's really going to be the basically the tip of the iceberg because once you get 80 laptops, now, you know, of course you're going to need another computer resource uh, person over there. Oh yeah, of course we've got so many laptops, we're going to have to get a server. And because we need to back up the server, we're going to need some net attached storage by HP. And the beat goes on. Well, yeah. Um, so, no problem. Uh, I don't have any problem spending that, that type of money. I mean, I, I, when I was younger, I, I played varsity uh, uh, high school and, uh, and varsity ball in, 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 at the university. I love sports. No, no issue there. But the pendulum is really, you know, sort of going the wrong way for us. We need to start bringing this up a little bit. Uh, at bu budget, time, I always, uh, budget time, I always hear a lot about net school spending. And, you know, that's the mandate from the state saying that you've got to spend X amount of dollars every year for the school children. Well, I want to introduce a new term for you. And I think from now on we're going to start, you start listening to net senior spending. I calculated, and it's verif it was verified by a finance uh, committee member, that South Southampton spends approximately $18.37 per senior. And that sort of came out with about 23000 in salaries and $411 in expenses. I'd like to know what that is compares, uh, how that compares to our neighbors. I hope uh, somebody will do that study. I, I, I will bet, I'm not a betting man, I bet my bottom dollar that we will be probably the lowest of the low 
not only in the area, but probably in the state. Let me talk about the uh, Council of Aging Board. And I, I want them, if they're watching tonight, to know that you're supposed to be working for me. You're supposed to be supporting me. And I mean the collective me of all the seniors. And, you know, again, some questions I would have of them, uh, and just what I mentioned before, do you, do you know how, how much each community spends on their seniors? It would be a nice thing to know, and it's something that I think the board should know. Have, has the board ever given any inputs into the, in the, into the dire uh, ambulance situation? Have they also contributed to the warming and, and cooling uh, uh, station situation? Are they ready to go before the Finance Committee and Select Board to, 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 to uh, demand a 40-hour week director with a competent salary? Are they pulling together a COA director search committee made up of town citizens? Do they have a subcommittee working on a new senior center? And I think if you look around here, and, uh, and if you talk to any of the seniors, certainly the ones in the room here, uh, there's a lot of discord between the seniors and the Council of Aging. Uh, just look behind me, you know, you don't see too many happy seniors here. And many of these seniors have totally lost confidence in this, in this current COA board. I strongly urge the select board to dissolve the current COA board and start over, over again. Start with a new board. Get a fresh start. If not, I think you're going to be seeing this week after week. People will be coming. People will be demanding more and more. And finally, I'd like to just quickly talk to the seniors both the ones in the room and those watching on TV. Get involved. Get involved. Follow the great example of uh, uh, Mrs. Strykars and Mrs. Mrs. Loisel. Attend select board meetings and speak out. Attend the Council of Aging board meetings and hold their feet to the fire on senior issues. And I know m most of the seniors do attend town meetings and they do vote, which is, a, which is an excellent thing. But they make, need to make sure that the senior agenda <coughs> is pushed through town meetings. And remember, seniors, you've earned it. And seniors, you deserve it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Art. That's so good. <laughs> How about 30 seconds? OK. Sorry. Only because sure we've been at this and, for And I appreciate it. And, and everything Art talked about is spot on. Their, their needs and their costs there. But my question back to the board would be there's costs everywhere. What is our plan to generate more revenue for this town? We cannot continue to increase taxes. We are a bedroom community, and, and we're not necessarily supporting building of bedrooms. So if we're not supporting the building of bedrooms, what are we doing to attract businesses? Are we putting a business park in here? Because the only way to sustain this appetite this town has for spending and continuing to spend is increase our revenue. So if we're not looking at a way to increase our revenue, and by the way, I've seen the taxes go up about 40% since I've moved here in nine years. It's gonna stop at some point. At some point, we can't continue to ratchet two and a half percent. So that's what I'd implore is I'm trying to build houses to bring in bedrooms into the town and it is almost to a point where it's not feasible we're just putting too many regulations on it so if if we don't want any more bedrooms in this town what is our plan to generate revenue and and that's really what's going to help the seniors that's when it's going to help our school districts that's going to help the fire department and we have no plan to that other than a two and a half percent increase and i bet you if we look at if we stop building in this town we're going to see a decrease in people coming and then like they said if the school district goes down we're going to see people not wanting to live here so that's all i'd say is why don't we look at this how can we generate more money with the resources we have so we can satisfy these needs thank you dan Open time for the public. Last call. Okay. I hate to be negative about somebody speaking, but you were pretty negative about Arthur, about what he whoa, was whoa, speaking whoa. That, especially. That, we're not going to go back and forth with individuals. Well, I think we should take care of the elderly. We, we paid our dues all these years, 
and it's, we're old now. We're 60s, 70s, and 80s now. We're asking for help. And the houses now, the houses in Southampton, I came from East Hampton, the houses aren't built like taxes here. They make East Hampton look sick. East Hampton uh, houses are 200,000, 300 the most. You got houses here, four or 500, right around my house. They built a complex, four, they built 12 or 13 houses around, that, uh, around uh, the baseball field. Uh, Harvest Avenue, uh, Harvest Road, I think it is. Uh, but I mean, I just hate to see somebody, you know, um, it was, <clears throat> Like you said, it can't knock anybody down, but I didn't like how Arthur was getting laughed at. Art's points like are well taken in many regards. And houses are, we're, we're, we do need, I agree with the gentleman, we do need something else. I don't know why this place, Southampton, doesn't build more businesses. Uh, that's a reason I don't well, know. Only, I'll never know. Probably. Only as a property owner in this town? I am a property owner. I am owner. a property owner too. And one of the problems I see is our zoning was established years ago that put industrial parks and commercial properties almost non-existent. They're put in certain areas of this town that do not encourage industrial growth. That's what that happened why? 30 years ago. And yeah. we don't have a sewer system. We don't have a store system, but the reality of it is the landmass that was designated for right. industrial. I mean, I own oh, I'm sorry. what 60 yeah. acres of industrial land yeah. that is protected and will never be industrial land, mm -hmm. and it's rolling hills. If they had designated that land in the flats areas of these towns, where the utility lines ran and everything else, you know, even Jim, no, no, anything against you, but you had to blast that whole hill down just to put your shop in. Yeah, it's not really the ledge, it's more the infrastructure. We don't have sewer, we don't have gas, and it cost me $30,000 to run the water pipe from the corner up to the shop. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not um, conducive. set up and yeah, conducive to yeah, uh, just, a business moving in the town at this point. So uh, right. that's something that uh, this town should look at. Are we running out of land, by the way, uh, in Southampton? Uh, no, 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 for building houses more? Because I see complexes are going up, but I mean, I don't get around That's this. a market-driven thing. Is but it? But we're really getting off topic okay. here. Okay, I'm off. We've about. opened this up for an hour and a half relative <coughs> to the Council on Aging stuff. Right. We have other priorities that we have to oh, deal with. Oh, you're still with. talking. And I think it's time now for me as chair to say I'm sorry, but we're closing open time for the public. And I'm going to declare a five-minute recess because as an old guy, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in five minutes. Thank you very much.
Parker at uh, seven. Uh, yeah, seven forty. Seven forty. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is report of the select board. I don't believe there's any report of the select board. Hey, I have something. Oh, you do? <coughs> yep. So I talked to um, Virginia Ahart at the CPC, and they're going over the articles for the upcoming town meeting. And they're moving right along, as is the zoning board. Uh, Nilda it told me they had a meeting last night that went smoothly. Very good. <coughs> Anyone else? I have nothing at this time. Do we, under this, do we want to report and just give an update on the meeting we had last Thursday for plowing of yeah. private roads? Yes. That would be a good time to update everyone okay. on that. Okay. Want me to go or you want to go? Oh, you can go ahead. Okay. We had a Board of Selectmen meeted po meeting posted for last Thursday, 6 o'clock at Norris School. Uh, two of us were there, uh, Jim and myself, so we didn't have an official select board meeting because we didn't have a quorum, but we held an informational session. And we had folks there, we, 40 or 50 folks? Let me see about I'd, that. I'd say from the four affected roads that we were talking about with, with plowing, Randall Kemp was there, and we had... Was it Tiffany Labrie from the Planning Committee? Yes. Yes. So we all we all sat up there. It was a it was a real good group. They they came out to ask a lot of questions and probably lasted a, a couple of hours. Jim <clears throat> did a great presentation of how we got to where we we are now and and how we're going to go forward. Uh, and do you want to explain the steps, the three steps that we talked about taking in order to get this uh, push forward, the voting and the sure. Well, if we go back, the, the, we had a. Um We had a resident come to us and saying that we shouldn't be plowing private roads with public money. Right. And of course, as we said at the meeting, that uh, we checked with our legal and it's it's not correct. I mean, we shouldn't be doing that. So um, we decided to uh, identify the roads in town that we believe are the private roads that we are currently plowing. And the roads we identified were, were uh, procured road extension. Bass Cove Road and Wallace Road. And then there's a new subdivision that is close to approval, but it's not approved yet that we're currently plowing, and that's um, Bissonette, which is Bobcat Hollow. And I believe that one's gonna be off, off our plate very shortly. And uh, so we're just talking about three roads. Uh, uh, if I can, it was a, if we take Bissonette Circle off, there's 23 houses, that's it. It's a they're very small road. Yeah. Yes, so uh, so basically we explained to the residents that um, you know, we have a few options we can do here. Number one, and the easiest, is accept the bylaw that we put forward, uh, which is, um, I believe, Chapter 40, Section 6, C and D, uh, which allows the selectmen to continue plowing, vote to continue plowing uh, private way with public <laughs> money. Um, that needs 200 signatures. And we had petitions available at the town meeting earlier uh, this year in January. And uh, we explained at the meeting last week the same. And I believe... And they were due Monday yeah. at 4 o'clock. Monday at 4 o'clock. clerk's office. And I believe there's over 250 signatures came in oh. and they were validated. So the, it will be put on the ballot for this coming town elections it's for us to vote on that so we can do this legally and no longer... Uh, be in violation of uh, mass law. Um, so the the second way we can do it is if somebody can give us information, Brickyard Road extension, I always was under the impression it was a public way. Uh, we cannot find any layout, any vote from the town meeting. And if anybody has any information on that, bring it forward, we'd love to have it. And we could resolve that issue and we'd be down to two roads if that's the case. And the third way is, um, is to make these a public way. And there's a process to go through. It's a little more difficult, but then again, um, if the layout's done and the deed is done and the town votes to accept it, um, then we may uh, receive Chapter 90 money from the state, so it would help with some of the maintenance. So those are the three issues, or the three possible solutions that we laid out at the meeting. And the one that we're going with right now is the bylaw acceptance so that will be at the next election and uh, if we're not successful with that then we'll have to try another avenue to help these people out 
Right, and I uh, just want to say that the people there, are probably the best crowd I've seen at, at any event. They're very enthusiastic, they were very positive, and, and they wanted to get this to change. So I just wanted to thank them publicly because I think they did a great job, 250, 270 votes. So it shows if people have an interest and they turn out, they can make changes. They need now to get out for the vote, which is May 8th or so? The election, is that May 8th? Yeah, sounds right. Um, May 1st, is it? Okay. I think it's May 1st. Yeah, because we need those people and everybody else to get out and vote whichever way they decide. Yes, and the bottom line is um, I don't think there's going to be any dollar change in our budget. It's roads that we've been plowing other than Bobcat Hollow, but if that's an accepted as a, a public way, that will be off the table. And the other three roads have been plowed for as long as I can remember. I mean, it's got to be 30 or 40 years anyway. Um, so really there's no change in, in our, in our uh, expenses to the town. And so we're just trying to do it legally. Right, and one of the residences, I, for, I forget his name, went up there and he took the time to go to the assessor's office and look up all, I think, 56 or so residents. And he came in and says that group of people pay a uh, total over $300,000 in real estate taxes a year. So they said they're paying their taxes. They feel they should be plowed like any other road. I gotta give them credit for going out and doing all that homework. Yeah, and the other, the other thing too is I look at it this way, <coughs> that they're paying taxes and they've been you know, having their plowing done for the last 30 or 40 years. So if the town decides to stop plowing, um, they may file for an abatement and they may be uh, given that abatement. I can't answer that question for sure, but the town may lose money if that's the case and they have to hire their own snowplow. I, I can't answer that for sure, but that's a possibility. So let me ask you this. There's supposed to be a uh, note on the ballot explaining why this code is necessary. Has that language been drafted for the ballot? Language has not been drafted for the ballot. We were going back and forth today with the blurb, yeah. but uh, that's the next step. We were just we have the we have the and by the way it is it is May first. I just it's checked May first, yes, yeah. May 1st okay. ballot <clears throat> question and we'll have that all together. The yeah. actual right. ballot question I believe is very um, very defined in the bylaw. Right. We're talking about the description that we like to put above that describing what the town right. is looking to do. Well, yeah, An we should. We, we need to talk to Janine. I was talking to her before. There's a timeline in getting that wording to her, and I, I want to say it's Wednesday or Thursday, so we want to check with her. But also, she said we can amend what the actual wording says for the vote, and we could do that as a, a select board rather than just append a description or explanation. Well, you had uh, a rough draft of that. Should we read that and talk about that for a minute? And if we approve it, we could amend it as well. At least she needed it by tomorrow morning, first thing, is what she is told what me. Is that what it was? Okay. Yes. I think what you wrote, I just inserted the word private roads. Okay. And in but the first uh, sentence. But also, other than that, I think that was. Charlie came up with, uh, a, Charlie sentence, came up with a sentence to add on. At the bottom. I addressed what <laughs> the roads that were here now, and he said we need to also address going forward, which made sense. So do you have that composite there with you? I mean, I'd like to read it into the public rather than have them say we're doing something behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't. I, I have a truckload of emails to me. Pull it up too, if we got a second. But, uh, may I ask if there's been any opposition to this? Have you, does everything you've talked about seems positive, plus yeah. all of the commitment of the people involved? And I'm not sure if you're setting up a question for the voters who are uneducated and they have to come in and say, well, what's this about? And they read the pros. And they might need, you might feel obligated to also, people who voted no for this, maybe because of so-and-so. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to throw sand in that, but that's what happens on a referendum question. You get the, you get the right. science presented. I don't know if there is a science. Yeah. What we're trying to do with the description is let people know it's a very limited amount of roads. It's not going to cost any taxpayer money. It's not going to cost any uh, increases in the budgets. Uh, Randall Kemp is here. He does it with the current staff. So we want to let people know it's not going to cost anything. It's just going to continue what we're doing. Well, I'd, like to, I'd like to add one thing to that. Um, it did come to my attention when I, I actually got a few signatures as well. And some of the people I was talking to 
we're saying so we're going to start plowing all these private roads there's driveways there's common driveways and this could open up a can of worms and it may be very expensive for the town and and i explained it this way in my eyes when somebody builds a house in this town they have frontage on a public way um, if they create a common driveway to access it from a different point for two or three houses that's not our responsibility our responsibility is to plow in front of their public way right. um, so that would eliminate a lot of the um, common driveways that have come about like for instance let's look right across the street uh, between King Oak Farm and here um, there's several houses in there they have a common driveway they all have frontage on route 10 route 10 gets plowed so that wouldn't be one that we would consider plowing that's the way I look at it and I'm not sure if the board um, agrees with that or not but that's, no, that's I agree. I agree. that was my explanation to some of the people I was asking to sign it and they were good with that okay I brought up at least my part of it you want us to go over it now I think Bob went to get the actual document yeah I just got my email I sent him oh all right well we can wait if you want uh we can start with yours i'm trying to find what i sent back but i got so many emails that went out today that i'm okay. not having much luck so here here's a draft without charlie's you can add it. it says historically the town has plowed these three roads for many years voting for this question will not increase taxes or require additional staff to perform the work conversely voting against this question will not reduce taxes and will have minimal effect on highway department costs these roads currently have many residents located on them and will continue to be plowed if the vote is passed. So then it says, a yes vote will allow these roads to continue to be plowed. A no vote will discontinue plowing of these roads. And you had a... I had a statement that said that it should be understood that if there was any roads that weren't designated but because of record errors, they could be included at the discretion of the select board. Right. Simply put... It's like Brickyard Road Extension. If all of a sudden we find out there's another road that we didn't have in our database, then yep. the select board vote could just automatically take care of it. Yeah, yeah I think that describes it well. And so by, by putting this forward, the select board stands in favor of this. I, mean, I don't know if you need it to take a position what? We're Stand discussing it. it. Yeah, we should we should take an official vote though. Put it on record. I think I think it's a good idea to have it there. Motion. Bob's not here to take the minutes, so. Oh, well. Um, and I, I mentioned about the um, guidelines that I would use to approve <laughs> it, you know, public frontage. Um, there's one more, too. If there's a road that is private with some houses on it that the highway superintendent feels that he cannot get his truck down that road and it would endanger that the vehicle and not you know get stuck or whatever that it would be his discretion if there is a private way that he feels that's not adequate yeah. so that was the other and I think that would be a procedure that we would put together with yeah. with Randall but not part of this right. you know, description so I'll Bob is I hate to just do this without him taking a minute check you want to take some minutes well do you want to vote on the narrative oh we should yeah wait yeah. Bob because we got to vote maybe to support this article if that's what we choose that's to what do I'm looking for make a motion to support the article and then we need to make a motion to amend the article to have this narrative or add to the add the narrative to the beginning of it yeah oh, here he comes oh, okay yeah we, we we pulled it up Bob uh, Read it? I read it, yeah. Oh, you, you already read it? Yeah. Why don't you read it again, Bob, yeah. just because you probably got my part to it, too. Yep. Historically, the town has plowed <coughs> three private roads for many years. Voting for this question will not increase taxes or require additional staff to perform the work. Conversely, voting against this question will not reduce taxes <coughs> and will have minimal effect on highway department costs. These roads currently have many residences located on them and will continue to be plowed if the vote is passed. A yes vote will allow these roads to continue to be plowed. A no vote will continue, plowing, continue the plowing of these roads. And your 
your piece basically states that if there's a road that is of not of the record it allows the select board discretion to add that to the list yes I think here's what I have the bylaw as this, well. this vote will also allow the board of selectmen discretion concerning any other private roadways that might have been omitted because of record errors yeah. that's your language far more articulate before yeah. do we need to also look forward and say it will allow the select board to add additional roads that may because we don't well, know that's what. described in the bylaw there's a couple of very um it's very detailed um number one the select board can you know vote to uh, plow in uh, sand i believe it says of a public way <coughs> in a i mean a private way but also it has to be open to the public yeah. If they if they put signs up there, the public's not uh, allowed. Then uh, they can't follow this bylaw. We can't plow it. Well, it's almost eight o'clock, guys. Okay. Uh, so I hear a motion. So I'll make a motion as Bob wrote it with the extra comment with on the there. additional comment. Second. Second. Can I have a little discussion? Sure. I just want to make sure Randall is okay as the highway. Uh, superintendent I, I wouldn't want to pass this without him commenting either way yeah I, I, it sounds great to me I, th I think just to keep it really simple these were legacy streets that were have been plowed for many years and uh, should the public wish we will continue plowing them okay I have a question. but I'm not looking to take on any additional right. Right private streets unless they're accepted at town meeting right. so I have a question uh, Randall are there any streets that are hard to maneuver around that people would have a hard time that you have a hard time plowing um, the more snow we get yeah some down in your neighborhood get pretty tight um, they're narrow to begin with and then when you have to start finding places to put snow they get more and more tight so any of these new streets we're talking about, there's no problems. It's just some of the older streets, there are some problems. Yeah, any new, any new subdivisions are supposed to comply with uh, regulations which make sure they're a certain width and length and have turning radiuses and things of that nature. Right. Your paperwork got mixed in with mine. <laughs> Thanks, Randall. Thank you. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. <coughs> All right. Do you want to vote? To, that was a vote to accept the language. Do you want to vote to back up? Jack, these people can't hear you. Oh, sorry. You want to make a motion to support <coughs> the selectman behind it? I mean, right? I'll make a motion that the selectman take a vote and uh, whether we support this or not. So you, why don't you put that in the form of a you make a motion that we accept it. I make a motion that we accept. Well, we're not accepting the bylaw. We're just supporting it because okay. it's up to the townspeople whether they want to accept it. I make a motion the select board support this particular bylaw. Okay, second. Discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next. Town Administrators report. Town Administrator, uh, there have only been two working days since the last meeting, so I have a short report for me. Uh, <laughs> and most of it is just a reminder, an important reminder, that April 3rd is the deadline for the submission of warrant articles. Also, the board has scheduled April 18th to review uh, the classification and compensation report of DLJ consultants. Uh, it looks like there's a very good chance that the annual town meeting will be broadcast live over the cable system based on an exchange of emails that I saw between Charlie and uh, our cable uh, manager. Um, not completely certain, but good chance that that could that could happen live could, broadcast over the cable I could explain to you the alternate plan but I don't think we want to get into that in depth okay. but it appears it's going to happen mm -hmm. we've also received 
a letter from the Attorney General uh, uh, stating that Articles 1 and 2 of the January 24th Special Town Meeting are approved. Article 1 granted non-ticketing authority to the uh, Health Department, as you recall. Um, and number two, importantly, was the change in the town's zoning code uh, to comply with the requirements for green communities. So now we have all five criteria met to become a certified green community and take advantage of some grants from the Commonwealth for energy conservation. Um, <clears throat> Board of Selectmen meetings on the 4th of April and the 18th. Uh, department has meeting tomorrow at 10. Finance Committee continues meeting on Mondays. Yes, Jack. Pardon me. Um, an E purge, power purge, disrupted tower computer system. Oh, I missed that, yes. yes. Uh, we had a power surge yesterday that uh, caused some difficulties with some of our computers, including in the Treasurer Collector's Office. So we had to bring in Northeast Utilities today to do some restoration. What we learned in the process is that we need to check on our surge suppressors. Uh, <clears throat> there was one surge suppressor that uh, where the battery wasn't functioning, and so a surge like that can do some damage to the to the system. So, one of the things that I talked about <clears throat> um, I, in a meeting yesterday uh, with the technology person from the school department was. Um, coming up with a technology plan for the town, taking a look at what we have and trying to project into the future what will be needed so that these kinds of things occur less frequently. Uh, we have had, you know, fairly regularly, a uh, series of breakdowns either in our internet connection or some other problems uh, relating to the computer system here. So we need a plan, we can get a plan from Kim at the uh, school department. Charlie was there for part of that meeting. And uh, we'll know how to go, where we need to go in terms of uh, making sure that we have good up-to-date technology at the lowest uh, cost. So it'll be more like, more like a five-year plan, <clears throat> not something we can, we can um, automatically uh, come to terms with. So I have another question. What's that? Backup for our systems. What kind of backup do we have, and how many times do they do it on an annual basis? I discovered today that the backup system hasn't been used for a number of months. Ooh. So, there are some issues. There are some issues. Um, yeah. We obviously have internet email issues and internet issues and so forth. So. Uh, rather than just charge ahead and make some decisions, I think it's important to have that plan and then make decisions on that basis and make sure we have the funding to do what's, what's recommended. Certainly having our email system in Utah has not worked out well for the town, <coughs> and so we're going to bring that back <coughs> to the area. And um, so far, the other... Uh, support that we've had from Northeast IT has worked well. It's just that they don't maintain our email system. So, um, and that contract runs out in the fall, so we can't do anything about it until the fall. Finance Committee continues meeting on Mondays. Uh, the NARS school is Monday, April 3rd, and April 10th, now we have the water department scheduled for 5.30. Reminder that the annual town meeting is May 16th, the annual election May 1st, and that's the report, Chairman. Question? No. No, very good. All right, I'm going to go back to old business then. Okay. Joint meeting with the search committee for the town administrator. Ta -da. I did board. send out to the search committee copies of the up-to-date Personnel Policies and Procedures <coughs> Board approved town administrator job description. Everyone should have that. Uh, also, in the packets, a copy of the standards that the Board of Selectmen have adopted. Uh, thirdly, 
you should have two bids, one from the Collins Institute at UMass Boston and one from um, Bernie Lynch uh, that uh, were included in that packet. Um, I did get something in today from the Collins Institute which revised their bid. And I did send that out by email as well. So, when did you send that? Um, it, when it came in, sometime around noon, I think. So that came in today? Yes. Uh, there's, there's not much change. This is what happened. I got a message from the director of their program, who was out of the country for three weeks. He came back, apparently looked at uh, what was submitted here and sent me a message saying that he has reviewed um, what they submitted and that the town has already done some things that would consume time and, and provide costs. And so they reduced their bid. I think their bid was 14000 mm -hmm. and I think it's down to 10000 Yes, sir. So. Um, I'm assuming we same process we come up, or is this sort of an open? Meeting? I'd like to keep it as an open forum, but the okay. first thing I would like to do is review the job description. Okay. Because the board selectmen has never actually voted to approve the job description, but I want input from the committee on this. My assumption is everyone that's on the committee here has been sworn in by the town clerk. Uh, I know that there are two questions on this job description. <coughs> that came up from some of the committee members. So I think I'll start with the first one. The first question was. Before we do that, I, Bob, I don't have it in my packet, this information. You can use this. Take this if you like it. You don't have you don't any, have of, the, any of that job description or uh, yeah. quotes or anything. Really? Yeah. Oh. Huh. 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 I know. I just. I'll, 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 this information was sent out. I'm sorry. This information was sent out separately. Yeah. It would, it would not be. Yeah. It would not oh. be in your packet. I, I, my packet. Yeah. It was in his packet. Oh. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. That yeah. I can find. Lucky me. <laughs> what has happened now? All right. So here, so here's the dilemma. Okay. Mm. We have a job description that I would like to see this committee have a, some time to chime in on before we accept it. Mm -hmm. So even though the board members don't seem to have it handily. Is it acceptable to just make a motion to allow this committee to review that for a week and get back to us? Is it, I think it makes sense. I mean, I, I know that Vicki and I talked about one thing in the job description that sort of was like a, why are we doubling the same job? So. What's the, what are the items just so we know, not to re-ask? Uh, okay, one is the, uh, the fact that uh, keeping and maintaining a full, complete inventory of all property of the town that has a value of $1,000, the town accountant does that. So why have the town administrator doing it if you got one doing it? The other thing I wanted was I wanted to make sure there was a sentence in here that said that the any HR concerns, the town administrator was the first stop so that that person could sort that out before it went to personnel board, selectmen, whatever. And I don't see it in here, but I do remember highlighting it and sending it to you. So those are the two that I'm aware of. I don't know if anybody else has anything else. Well, I, I appreciate the fact that you would give us a chance on this. I, I, you know, I don't want to be... Uh, I'm going to be mean. Pardon? I'm going to be very mean to you. <laughs> You have to go in front of that podium, oh. or they will come after me. <laughs> no one can hear you. It's funny because I, when I'm there, I can't hear anything, <laughs> even, even when somebody's talking here. I'm sorry. My name is Bill Erickson, and thank you for allowing me to serve on the search committee. And I'm appreciating uh, your opening comment about inviting the search committee members to weigh in on the job description. Uh, frankly, I found it pretty vague. and in the interest of, in the long term, the accountability for the performance of the person involved, 
there needs to be a lot of clarity about what indeed he or she is responsible for. Mm -hmm. And it keeps being repeated in different ways in, in different parts of the language. So if you don't mind, I'd be happy to work on this. I'm glad we all Does will have board, a crack at it. the board comfortable with it? Uh, knowing his background, I think it would be great if you would lend us a hand. Yeah, I think it would be great to have the committee look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other, as long as I'm standing here, uh, the other things, it's, it's all about process to me. And I guess I'm flattered that we're part of this uh, suggestions. Not We don't vote on who you want to hire for the consultant, but we may have points of view about about what makes a good consultant or what, which, one, which one to choose. And I just sat here during the earlier meeting, not listening to the senior center story, and writing down about, I don't know, 10 or 12 different reference points that say, well, what makes one consultant better than the other? What are the factors that that you would consider? If, if I were alone, what would I consider? Mm -hmm. And it has to do with the nature of the search itself. How extensive is it? Is it global? Is it statewide? The activity that you're expecting of the consultant locally or at a distance or just advising or working hand in hand, and that has something to do with the quality of this committee mm -hmm. that you appointed. I mean, if, if we're all good at that, you might not need a, an in-person consultant that, off, that, that much. Um, one person impressed me as a go-getter to recruit almost, find people. And short of headhunting, maybe there is a point for that. But I don't know if that's what we're looking for. Well, and Bill, I would just want to contrast and finish the this, this sentence where the other one was writing in terms of attracting. Mm -hmm. You would attract people to come to you as opposed to going out and find them. If that's a factor, then maybe this we, would, we could talk about that. You go ahead. I'm sorry, Charlie. Well, my thought was this, that the reason of having the screening committee was to help us with the job description and help us to evaluate who the consultant's going to be. Right. You just got this information. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I personally, I'm not looking for this committee to respond to us at this point in time. Okay. Uh, at, well, that's this, good. at this juncture, I'm looking at your committee basically voting to appoint a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk, mm -hmm. and set your next meeting. Okay. And then after that, it's going to be go forth right. and get back to us. Okay. I mean, that's my feeling of this. It wasn't that we're going to do this tonight. Yeah. No, and I'm, I'm sorry. It just reminded me of last week because I don't know what the qualifications you had in mind when you chose us. And it was, as John said, it was clearly our resumes, and that's, that's yeah, fine. That's what we looked at. So I feel like when we start this process, it's the same idea. What are we looking for on a consultant? Never mind who they are. So, okay. All right. Okay. Just to Charlie, if I could follow up. Um, what I did was t took the um, version that you sent to me that was highlighted in yellow. I would say 99% of what you highlighted were typo stuff uh, and a couple grammatical things. That's what I changed. I did not change the one substantive comment that you made because, you know, the, the one, no, the one substantive comment was, do we add an HR function? Yes. And I thought that's a decision. So I, I gave you a copy of the Personnel Policy and Procedures Board reviewed job description. Right. Now, <coughs> to amend that, it, I think that's what you're asking everybody to, to uh, comment about. Um, and a big issue there is to what extent will your next town administrator uh, be involved with HR? So it still comes back to, does this board want them to go through and re evaluate all this and get back to us? Yes. Uh, there's only two or four pages here. That's why it was, it's only two or four pages that were oh. copied. That's why I'm, uh, sorry. oh, you want the rest of <laughs> said, my, job des my job description has a lot less than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I think it's a great idea if they will look at both of these documents and come back to us with their thoughts and suggestions because I, I want to make sure they understand what we want and we understand what they want. I mean, I made my selections based on their experience and their background to help us do this. So are you 
Michael Rosenberg, 144 East Street. Um, are you not voting on a consultant this evening? That's correct. Okay. So I have some clarifying questions that we may want to clarify prior to voting. Um, and I broke it out by the two respondents, which are good to mention. Um, community paradigm. So a difference between community paradigm and Collins is community paradigm did not include any out-of-pocket fees or expenses. It did not include it in their proposal. So there's some exposure for more costs there. I mean, it doesn't say they will charge us for it, but there will be other expenses other than advertising and printing. Um, another item I noticed, if you do the time right, his timeline for awarding and having someone start is about six months. Um, with Collins, the $10,000 proposal does not include travel or hotels and also has a caveat for certain administrative fees. So I'd be curious what the average cost of those are and what the administrative fees are, if it's a percentage of the total. Um, for instance, is it a percentage of 10, but then when you add your travel hotels and other expenses, is that percentage off of that number? Um, I, my, my understanding is that <clears throat> uh, Mr. <clears throat> Lynch is a resident of Plymouth mm -hmm. <clears throat> and would be doing this search himself. And so there would be some expenses there. I thought I heard last week so, so I'm going to, that, this that is the Collins ask person you. lives in the Worcester area. And yeah. She lives in Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, yeah. Oh, Shrewsbury. Right. Mary Lady does. So, so yeah. she would be going back and forth rather than staying over, I thought. Right. I thought so, that's what she was saying. So to that point, Mr. Lynch didn't put in there that we would be paying for travel or hotels in his proposal, which is very important because he's at 10500 Collins is at 10000 Collins also doesn't include candidate expenses, but that's something that we would be liable for, whereas Bernie Lynch does not put that in the, in the, um, the proposal. So there's a, there's a bit of an apples to oranges here when you're looking at the final number, especially if you consider Collins took out 4,000 for designating the search committee, which seems a large amount of money to, to pick a group of people, but has Mr. Lynch been afforded the same opportunity to level his bid um, with that, you know, maybe he has, um, but just I think these are all ironing questions. out the these are all go questions. back to both of them with, yeah. you know. Yeah. You can uh, just send me a paragraph. I will yep. get it back to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, normally <clears throat> travel expenses, if we select to see somebody that's coming from out of state, we would pay for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th so there's a lot of expenses we need to clarify. Right. Especially, I mean, they're talking about candidate expenses, depending on the the breadth of your search, I mean, you could be looking at airline fees, hotel right. fees, depending on where the respondent comes from. If, yeah. if we don't align that, that no, we will not pay for someone's flight to come here to interview. Well, I, I, I guess I would leave that to the search committee when they're looking at resumes. If they say Mary Smith is in Ohio, she'd make a great one, then come to us saying, yeah, we'd like to bring her in. It'll cost about a thousand dollars. Can we get the funding? You know, I, I don't want to say it's not part of the package. You guys should look at the candidates and decide. We're not deciding on the search committee, though. So you, We're not I'm sorry for the consultant. So the select board is making the decision making on the consultant. We're making recommendations to the select board as to who the consultant will be hired. Right. That's the first part. But when you actually have okay. search, uh, when you have uh, people that are coming in interested in the job, there's more money involved with that, and you can make a determination if the return on on the experience is worth, you know, laying out some flight money or hotel money. Well, wouldn't you think that uh, initially the search would include maybe looking at resumes and phone interviews and maybe oh, yeah. even <clears throat> Skype? Sure. And then when you get down to some of the finalists, right. that point you might end up saying, "You really, I want to, I want to meet you." I mean, we're going to exactly work yeah. that out. I guess we literally are handing this to this committee, saying. Take a look at the job description. Tell us if you're comfortable with it. If you're not, tell us what we need to change. Okay. Then we'll vote to approve it based on your recommendations and our input. Then we're going to look to you to come back to us and tell us what uh, consultant you think is the most viable for what we need done. Mm -hmm. But it's in okay. your corner with this. So have we had any other respond um, consultants respond with a proposal? Did we just look at two? <clears throat> I requested three. Okay. Uh, these are the three uh, 
overwhelmingly dominant search firm <coughs> in the state for public sector work. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. So this question is about the process, and uh, was it clear, and maybe it's my fault for not reading their proposals clearly, was advertising not included? This was a proposal to do the consulting work plus advertising in both cases, mm -hmm. as you read it. The advertising fees. For the cost of doing right. advertising. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's all I have. The advertising fees, I think, are going to be minimal. Uh, it's they would advertise electronic. Pardon, yeah, I, they'd advertise on the Mass Municipal Association website. I, I think it's forty-five bucks, yeah. and they would advertise probably on the Mass Municipal Managers Association, and maybe the I. I think one of them mentioned ICMA, the International City Management Association. Six. That would be, yeah, yeah that would uh, that would cost a little more, but we're just talking relatively small amounts of money, and it's going to be electronic. Uh, advertising. Also, uh, as Jim commented, uh, I'm aware that the standard now for out-of-state candidates is a Skype interview. And then if someone is extraordinary and has a clear interest, then you might sure. bring them here. Uh, I hope all you members received the charge that the Board of Selectmen put together for the committee. Okay. We got that out this afternoon, um, okay. and what I'll do is uh, make sure that we give everybody a copy before they leave tonight. Uh, one of the bullets says the, the committee's lines. first task will be to advise the Board of Selectmen as to hiring a consultant to help the committee perform its task. So can you get that out to everybody, Bob, including the select board, just so we all have it at the same time? Yeah, well, I'll, we'll just do a scan tomorrow. Uh, right. We, frankly, looked around for it for much of the day, and then Velda left, so we just found it at the very end of the day. Okay, no problem. Uh, we have several copies of it, because remember, we amended it. We yep. wanted to make sure we had what your... Okay. So I guess at this point, unless I'm wrong, uh, your committee needs to vote on a chair and a vice chair and a clerk and then yeah. set your next meeting. So I'm going to ask a question. The only committee member missing is, is George Rancourt. Uh, does everybody, did anybody know if he got sworn in He was not? sworn in, yes. He was sworn in. He just couldn't make it tonight? Okay. So we have a full committee. Can we introduce ourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on down. <laughs> I only know a few. Michael Rosenberg. Oh, got, let's do it up Come there. Come to the podium, Mike. You want to do it? <laughs> 140 uh, Michael Rosenberg 144 East Street just I know some of you I don't know everyone so it would be nice to we'll bring them all up nice or go around the table as they do at meetings <laughs> Vicki I guess I'm next um, Vicki Morrow Pomeroy Meadow Road and I am the accountant for the town so okay. and I am still Bill Erickson I live at 29 Walcott Road and I'm a retired educator superintendent right. chief Michael Goyette, College Highway, and the Chief of Police. Uh, Joanne, uh, Randall. Randall Kemp, former road, Highway Superintendent. Joanne Alderman, High Street, uh, retired <coughs> Director of Human Resources. <coughs> Thank you. Committee has to pick a leader. Well, do they have to do that tonight, or could they schedule their first meeting and then take care of that business on their own? Whatever they like. George is in here. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, why I was sure thinking. Here. Well then, yeah, so we need a just schedule your next meeting and then a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. Yeah. Uh, and just let us know. Okay. Uh, if you don't get the paperwork, go after Bob. <laughs> And if at a meeting you need a select board member, just let us know. And yeah, call John. <laughs> one, one will be there. <laughs> Are these meetings posted meetings? You're, yeah. You have to post them. Yeah. You are Take committee minutes. of the board of selectmen. You are. Yeah. You have to post meetings. So should they give them to you, Bob, or for posting? I'm sorry. Should they give them the dates to you for posting? Yeah, if they send that, we'll get them posted. 
Somebody still has to be point right now. Well, maybe we can caucus in the hall and share one of those emails and Mr. Rankler's email. Yep. And send that to each other. That's legit. Yep. I will send out, if you saw the email that I sent today, that is, that's a full list. That's a full distribution list for all of you. Uh, I will send out tomorrow that one other piece that you don't have, and it'll be the same distribution list. And it's not on the town server, so I think you can just take it. Just so you know, I didn't get the one that you sent today. I, I wondered if I had your correct email address. Apparently, I don't. So <coughs> I, I took what you had written. Um, what, what's what's the email address? Well, I don't know. If you want to put it on public? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a one in your email address? This is what was this is what it was. So yours is right here. Oh, yeah, but it's not Okay, so you guys can work that out. Yeah. All right. So that is correct. So, then, this is like one so they can set their meeting, and they're on their own now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, Charlie, we need to bring them back at a meeting in the near future to come back with recommendations. Right, but let them process that and give and come back to us when they can. I don't want to set a date on them. You don't want like two weeks out or something? We can target that, I guess. So we, we can discuss over email and come up with a date that all of us can make. We are allowed to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, this one that you sent out is correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to push it off. She got it. She got this one. Right. She was talking about the charge. Yeah. The charge, <coughs> the charge uh, we didn't send out. Okay. Yeah. That'll go out tomorrow. Okay. Thank you all for volunteering. Thank you. <laughs> Seeing I wrote it, I sort of have I a have copy. It in, I have it. I'll just, in another folder upstairs and in my email so I yeah. can send it. Have it. If it's not 100%, it's close enough. All right, we have to keep going with this meeting. Uh, I don't believe so. I just need Mr. Rosenberg. <laughs> you did a great job. There's so much going on here. Okay, we're, we're still live on camera, guys. Oh. Over a chair. Thanks, Velda. I uh, was approached by one of the assessors today pertaining to uh, the assistant assessor's position and the fact that they want this expedited. Uh, if you remember, uh, Mr. Swanson came in front of the board about a week ago or so, and the discussion was the fact that the select board wouldn't do anything because the town bylaw says that the personnel board had to approve it. Well, the personnel board did approve it, and it went to finance. Finance tabled it, so the select board, uh, the assessors uh, members, Gary Swanson came to me and ask the Board of Selectmen to sign this and get it moving. This is basically to move somebody up in the position of assistant assessor, which will be a pay increase in that. Uh, it's not approved by the Finance Committee. We have the authority to make this happen if we want to. Uh, I understand the circumstances going on down at the assessor's office, and this person is going to be is doing the work. Um, so there is a need. The concern, as I understand it, is finance does not wish to have this as a long-term commitment to us because we would end up with two assistant assessor's positions. Mike, if I'm wrong with that, would you please come up and articulate? Michael Rosenberg, 144 East Street, uh, Finance Committee Chair. Um, so we did receive the PRF um, for the assistant assessor position. Um, we did review it. Um, we discussed it. We chose to table for two um, reasons. Um, we had questions for the Board of Assessors, and there were none in attendance of our Finance Committee meeting. 
Um, the first question being, similar to what Charlie was saying, are we training two individuals to perform the same role in a department when it's normally been one individual and a clerk administrative assistant? There was just some questions for us on that. You know, are we in the business of training two individuals to be fully qualified for certain positions? You know, it, it could lead to other things in other departments if we start fully training and fully paying um, department heads and slightly below department heads. Um, the second question we had, and while the PRF, um, you know, I was told verbally that it was only for FY17, but if you, if you change someone's pay or hours at some point, they're not going to look to reduce those in FY18. Looking at the budget shortfalls we may have for FY18, approximately $500,000 as is right now, is it the most prudent financial decision to institute raises today that we may not be able to afford in four or five months when we go over the FY18 budget? So these were questions that we just wanted to, to have answered by the Board of Assessors. Um, I did speak to Mr. Swanson today. He had agreed to attend or try to attend our Monday, our next Monday's meeting at 5.30 to discuss the items. Um, frankly, we weren't under the impression this was an emergency. We have to get it signed today. Um, so we figured waiting a week to clarify everything was appropriate. So are you saying you think this should be a temporary position? That's funded just through the end of fiscal 17? Well, it's a twofold question of why would we train someone to be as fully qualified as the the principal assessor right why are we paying to train two people to do a function that has been normally a one-person function in the town so that's the first question second question if we approve it today and it and we have to reduce hours next year we're not going to look to an employee to say well we now have to cut all your hours back down i mean we They've just justified on paper that they need this and they're qualified to do this. And like you said, they've been doing this job. So it could get messy if you go back and say, let's, we need to reduce your hours. So we figured, honestly, waiting three months to institute a change, similarly um, to what the library is doing. The library is looking to change the youth librarian's um, status in terms of hours. And we asked them to hold off until we get closer to the FY18 budget so that we know what the true effect is going to be. I mean, we have other, you know, raises that are proposed for FY18, but they're not proposed to start March of this year when we might not be able to afford them August of this year. So just trying to make sound fiscal decisions before we get ourselves into trouble. And then we end up having to cut something that we don't want to cut but are forced to because of things we may have tied ourselves up with. I don't know about you, but just the training somebody to do somebody else's job in case they're out, I, I always think that's a good idea to have backup there. That's, there's no issue there. Uh, so if I remember right, the, uh, the assessor is out, and this person is going to be taking on some additional duties, and we want to grade that person up right. to there. But what you're saying is it's a permanent upgrade rather than just until the assessor comes back at one of the issues. I have no knowledge of the principal assessor being here or not being here. I think that's another item that's related to this. Is this if this is an attrition plan, it should have been framed towards us or to us that this was sort of a succession planning, attrition planning, something similar. I don't think so. I believe the assessor is out on leave. Thus, that, was, that was not made known so, to us. Somebody needs to step up and do that work, obviously. So having somebody already trained to do it next time if it happens is a great idea. Uh, that doesn't address the, the money issue, of course. I would, I would ask the board, how do you know when we don't? It was just brought up uh, in, in one of the sessions. It was last week that I think you no mentioned idea. to us that yeah. there was a health issues with mm. the uh, yeah. principal. Yeah. It would be nice if the same information was shared with the, the lower tier approving boards of the PRF, to be honest with you. I don't, think, I don't think this is meant to hold anything up. It was simply to clarify questions that we had. And no, Mike, nobody's finding fault of yeah. this at all. Yeah. And, and part of the problem we have, as you see, is communications. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually spoke to the individual directly, mm -hmm. and I actually spoke to you this afternoon, giving you a quick update by cell phone. 
Not that that's the way I want to do things, but that's the way we seem to be doing things. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want your board blindsided by some action this board would take tonight mm -hmm. if this board decides to take an action. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the reality of it is the individual there right now is now doing that work. Mm -hmm. And they should be compensated. Are, are we just talking about additional hours for this position or we have to send her out to be trained? No, she's already trained. All we have to do, all we're doing is increasing her uh, rate yeah. of So time. the principal that's going to be out on leave, their hour, his hours are going to go down. So is it within the same budget? I mean. Maybe for fiscal 17. For it, might, it might balance. 18, that's going to be the issue. Yeah. Correct. Now, this person is the clerk now or? Whatever the other tier is lower. Okay. And that AA. Administrative system. And that position won't be refilled, as you understand. Is that accurate? If this, yeah. I have no information so to make So nobody was that from that. the Board of Assessors there to kind of explain all this information to you? Correct. <laughs> that would have probably solved a lot of problems. That's why we tabled the PRF. Just like we do to any other board that comes and we have questions, we can't, we're not going to make a phone call to someone in the middle of our meeting to clarify questions. Right. It's an open meeting and, oh. you know, it's, it, it's part of the process. Department's coming with major PRF changes. They come and they explain them. Yeah. To the board. So the question on the table is this, do we wait until the Finance Committee meets next Monday and then the Select Board meets next Tuesday? Are we meeting next Tuesday? Yes. Yes. That is the fourth. Check, check off every Tuesday. Charlie. That is the fourth. April fourth, yes. Every week. What is wrong with us? Yes. <laughs> All right. And three meetings in May, if you recall, which you agreed to today. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> but one of them was a town meeting. There wasn't much I could do about that one. Uh, so the, really the question is this, do we w table this thing until next Tuesday or do we basically use our authority and just do this and I hate to say it bluntly but step over to Finance Committee? I'm waiting for somebody else to go but I always yeah. have an opinion but you want to take the first one Jackie? Well I was going to say the person that's doing this job should be uh, compensated for uh, her work. I mean, it's 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 more of a um, you know us believing what she's doing and saying okay, yes, thank you, and paying her you know the right way. So my question: Can we retroactive this any time? So this is I don't support retroactive pay. As I mean, I, as a personal opinion, I think it puts us in financial hurt whenever we entertain retroactive pay. So legally, can we do it? Legally retroactive up until the end of the fiscal year. So like if you did a G July 2nd, you can't retro you can't retro pay the previous yeah. fiscal right. year unless it's a CBA with the season pass. Right. Mm. Okay. I mean, I, I personally think that there's a process that they need to go through and they should have been at the finance committee meeting to answer questions and back up what they needed and we'd just be voting on it tonight, I'm pretty sure. So I think we should wait till next week till the Finance Committee has a chance to talk with those folks. Is there a way that we could uh, approve it pending finance? Once you approve it, it's, it's, it's approved. Okay. So I need a motion. Yeah, you know, I would like, uh, I mean, I, I respect the Finance Committee's recommendations. I mean, I think it's very important. Um, but I also understand that someone is out on sick leave and uh, the other one has to step up the hours. The person it's is, a tough situation. The person is doing it and there is an opportunity if we decide next week to do some retroactive. That's another decision. Mm. That's the way I'm looking at it. I don't want yeah. to step over finance. Can you, I, I hate to sideline here. So you just you talk retroactive, retroactive until just what? like the, today, maybe this week. Okay, we're only going back like a week or so. Week, weeks, yeah, yeah, nothing. Not, yeah. We're not, not a looking, month. Or. We're all. I'm just curious. <coughs> we're looking at right. tonight. At least yeah. I'm looking at tonight. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, um, yeah, I, I would be in favor of if we wait till next week. I really like to get finance committee's uh, recommendation, and then if if that's all positive make it retroactive I think that would cover both well, need a motion well so moved well what's what's the motion is it with the retroactive or just that we're tabling it till tabling it 
till next meeting. Yeah. Just tabling it. That's it. Right. Right. We'll table it tonight, but next week, if it's all in favor, then we can do the retroactive. Right. Because Who's I feel that that person should be paid for this. Right. Making the motion. No, you said so moved. Okay, well, so moved. Because you said more, I thought it would, you should. All right. It. So Jackie made the motion. <laughs> Jim seconded it. All in favor of tabling it. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Your papers, sir. And we are meeting next week, so that's yep. next week. Building. All right. Oh, fun times. Have one all there. Let's see. Uh, I guess we're into new business, which is none. 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 I'm doing good with this, right? <laughs> all right. Now we get into the long and boring past. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Personal changes, change forms, PCFs. Would you please? I got it right here. I, right. I was hoping you weren't going to say that because I'm not going to get this right either. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to read all the PCFs and then we can vote as a group or do you want to vote individually? As a group. As a group, one okay. for all, all for one. Okay, PCF, personal change forms <laughs> uh, require our signature. Police Department, Sherilyn Goss, Public Safety Communications Dispatcher, Emergency New Hire. Police Department, Cheryl Goss, Public Safety Communications Dispatcher, Part-Time New Hire. Police Department, Kirsten Kirch, Public Safety Communications Dispatcher, Emergency New Hire. Police Department, Kirsten Kirch, Public Safety Communications Dispatcher, Emergency New. Fire Department, Rich uh, Blomstrom. Training aid slash EMS emergency new duties increase in hourly rate. Fire Department, Tyler Limoge, entry level firefighter, part time increase salary rate to state's minimum wage. Fire Department, Courtney Berto, uh, entry level firefighter, part time increase hourly wage to state's minimum wage. Fire Department, Rich Blomstrom, training aid slash EMS, new duties increase in hourly rate. That's on here twice. Yes, you're right. So we should only have that on once. Uh, Fire Department, Kyle Gagning, paramedic, emergency, increase hourly rate for graduation from paramedic program. Congratulations, Kyle. Fire Department, Kyle Gagnon, paramedic, part-time, increase hourly rate for graduation from paramedic program. Highway Department, Thomas Fattrell, transfer station attendant, new hire emergency. Highway Department, Thomas Fattrell, transfer station attendant, new hire part-time benefits. I'll make a motion we accept. Well, Rich um, Blostrom, it, the, it's not duplicated. One of them is an emergency, one of them is not. It's the same as the last one you read is, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. So it is okay. So I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. right. So it's just on different lines. Correct. Okay. So that's back in. Thank you. So make a motion. <laughs> we accept as red. red. I'll second that. Discussion. The only discussion I have is I wish they wouldn't say state minimum wage. That they simply say wage increase. Yeah, it's kind of sad, huh? Yeah, it is sad that we're paying minimum wage. Yes. I agree. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Let's see here. Um, we took care of your assessors. No licenses. Other documents requiring signatures. I sign the warrants. March 23rd, 17. P1738 for $260,128.30. March 23rd, 17, P1738 for $3,805.21. Uh, March 23rd, 17, P1738A for $161,635.16. And in advance, March 30th, 17, W17-39 for $195,175. Uh, Suckman's meeting scheduled for April 4th, 18th, May 2nd, 16th, and 30th. 
does the board want to go through the articles for annual town meeting again? I think uh, they're posted and I think we could do that next meeting. All right. Uh, that said, is there anything to come from the board in open session? If not, we're going into executive sessions for four different topics. Under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Number 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation and non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining session, or conduct contract negotiations with the non-union personnel, Case 1. Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Number 3, to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if in open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares case two mass general law chapter 30 a section 21 number three to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigation position of the public body and the chair so declare and that's case three and number four is Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Number 1, and Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, <coughs> 21, Section 3, to discuss the Attorney General's decision on an open meeting law complaint in light of threat and litigation if the Chair declares that having an open session will have a detrimental effect upon the town litigation position. We will come back into open session afterwards. I need a roll call vote to go into executive session. Labrie, aye. Martin, aye. Konecki, aye. Sears, aye. We are now in executive session.